It's the Sit and Sports Side Podcast. Can't wait. With Mike James. Come on, man. <laughs> Matt Hogan. It's going to be legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Legendary. And Eric Hanneman. I have dedicated my life to this team, okay? On 1045theteam.com. And welcome into the podcast today, January 3rd. 2017, the new year. I'm Eric Hammond along with Matt Hogan and Mike James. And what do you guys want to talk about today at first, guys? The playoffs. 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 Playoff NFL time, playoffs. Baby. It's yes. Time. All right. Well, happy new year, by the way, guys. Yes. Happy yes, new year very, from yes. all of us here. Jets are 1 0 at 1045theteam.com. <laughs> anyway, wild card weekend. Here we go. And there's a lot of storylines coming into this weekend. Um, but not, none's going to be a better game than I think that Raiders... I couldn't even say it was his favorite. Ra- Raiders-Texans Raiders, game. game. Bra- Brock, well, at least Brock Oswald was actually going to start. Game God. of See, I'm the that year. He, I'm upset he's going to start. Well, let's talk about the AFC quarterbacks. Uh, who, who's the best AFC quarterback? Uh, Brock Osweiler, <laughs> Matt McGloin. I don't know if it's going to be Connor Cook or Matt McGloin. McGloin's um, not playing. I don't know. That, that dumb Steelers quarterback. Or, uh, oh. <laughs> or Matt Moore. <laughs> or Matt Moore. Unless Tannehill God. plays. Anyway. Three just awful. But yeah, let's start with that. Let's start with that game. Um, it's the first one on Saturday. It's going to start off our weekend, and I really want to like think it's going to be actually going to be a good game, a good game to watch. But I don't, I don't know yet. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games where it, in my mind, it's just going to be defensive, right? I'm not expecting any big numbers from this game. It, <laughs> it's you know what's going to happen in this game. It's actually going to be a good game, and it's going to end in a horrible way. Like a team's going to miss an extra point, and they're going to lose. Like so the a game. team's going to lose this game instead of a team winning. Yeah, the game. yeah. It won't be like a team like outplayed the other team. You know It'll be like one team lost because they just all right. Know, here comes Mike. Cost the, themselves. Mike, how are they going to lose? On the way on the debacle the Bills had last week, it's going to be something stupid like that. Are we, bringing up, are we bringing up that Bills? Something thing? stupid like that, which we'll get to later. <laughs> yes. Uh, Predictions for this game for me, you know what? I want to believe in Connor Cook for whatever reason. I want to believe he's going to have like his Tom Brady moment. I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't know about that. But I think wow. with a full week of pool, he was talking about how he ran plays in that Denver Broncos game uh, that he did not run in practice. He hadn't run those in practice. He didn't get full reps necessarily in practice. Now, one week on a turnaround isn't necessarily going to uh, make him all of a sudden the. Uh, Bill Belichick, if you will, the genius of the offense. But I think Connor Cook, maybe full week of reps. He's got the weapons, I I think. And as long as he can hand the ball off, I'm sure like LeVac would say, to Latavius Murray and among other running backs and make a good enough throws, only be 15 to 20, actually take a page out of Alex Smith, another quarterback in his division's playbook. I think Connor Cook could lead his team to it. Because listen, the the Texans aren't that that hard of a problem. I was going to say, excuse me, I definitely think the Texans hey, what's are beating. What's wrong with you? Shut up. Like, <laughs> yeah, you feeling all right? <laughs> Little laryngitis this week. Um, Let me just say it. It, uh, it uh, levels the playing field for us on this podcast. Now. Yeah. It's like our only time we say, <laughs> "Speak up, Mike." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, I definitely think the Texans are beatable. I mean, mm-hmm. especially right without move, JJ Watt. Right move for Brock over Savage. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, Brock Osweiler has shown nothing. Should have big Tebow to come play. I, I'm not even kidding. I would rather they sign a quarterback in free agency and just let him play. Give Michael Vick a call. <laughs> I'm serious. And don't even throw the ball the entire game. Ask him, can you still run? Okay, we're just going to run the read option so, I mean, the is, entire game. I mean, he is black, so he should have some speed still. I mean, What are you, Ryan Clark? Man? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> totally just went there. Pulling the Ryan yeah. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! But I mean, seriously, I yeah, I would rather uh, see Savage out there. I think I know we've only seen a small sample of him too, see, but we've seen a big sample of Brock but Osweiler. To me with and Osweiler hasn't been good. If you look, this is my problem with Osweiler. Last year when he was in Denver, okay, fill in for Peyton Manning. If you ask me, his offense in Houston's better than what it was in Denver, and he hasn't done anything in Houston. I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know if I agree that it's better, but do you I also like, don't think like he ex- played. Expand with that a little bit. What, what do you got for me? To me, I just think DeAndre Hopkins and um, but Hopkins. Has, I mean, is, it because, is Hopkins having a bad year because of Osweiler? I don't know. I, I he could is be, that why? I, no, that's a good point. I mean, he wasn't. I mean, he was a good wide receiver beforehand, before last season too. But he wasn't yeah. this top tier yeah. wide receiver that you needed to have on your team that you need to pay the big bucks to have on your team. But I mean, you had Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, C.J. Anderson. 
did they still have Julius Thomas at that point? No, they no. did not. No, they got rid of him. He was in Jacksonville. Yeah. But still, I mean, that is a team full of weapons. I don't know. I, and he didn't even play that well, in my opinion. Well, the, I mean, the reason why the Broncos, if we're going to go back to last season, is because of Peyton Manning's uh, view of the offense was a lot better than Brock Osweiler. So he knew how to audible and change different yeah. uh, things at the line of scrimmage that ultimately helped that offense to get clicking a little bit. I mean, that's what Peyton Manning really did well. And, and people, I mean, I, I'm a big Peyton Manning fan, and, and uh, you know, he did not have a great statistical campaign last year. You know, everyone says that, but I think if Brock Osweiler was a quarterback in the playoffs, they wouldn't have won the Super Bowl, and that's why I still give a lot of credit to Peyton Manning last year, while some people might not have. I don't know. I agree with that. I mean, he's a game, <laughs> he, no, but he's a, he's a game manager yeah. too, Peyton Manning. Like right. he doesn't all he doesn't Cream have to have that arm to still exactly yeah. do what he does. You know, but I think we both think and agree, or all of us agree, that the winner of this game, I want to say, I don't want to say irrelevant. But in a way, whether they're going into New England or they're going into Kansas City, do we see either one going, like you know, having a playoff game no. uh, beyond next week no. or the week after? No, no right? I, so, I like want to like predict some optimism, but however, really, stranger <laughs> things have defense. happened in the NFL, right? And if Connor Cook has his Tom Brady moment, guys. No. We're all over Connor no. Cook. Man. Yeah, I, I, like I don't this. know what every reason. I just he's like a, Connor Cook. I just, think, Connor I, Cook I, just like, I like it. I just feel like he could. Let's move on to the Saturday night game. Or should we stay in the AFC? We'll stay in the AFC, I guess, and go to the Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Miami Dolphins. And if you guys remember, the not going to be a game. Not, not, but if game. you remember the last time the two played, it was in Miami, I believe. It was in Miami. Uh, but Jay Ajayi had one of three, one of his three 200-yard rushing games, and that was almost like his coming out game. It was. It was like one of the first games that Adam Gase decided to go with one running back. It was Jay Ajayi. He ran over 200 plus yards, and Ben Roethlisberger was the quarterback in that game, and. The defense for Miami played very well and even injured him in that game. So who knows? I mean, I'm not trying to say they're going to have a bounty on him. They're not going to Sean Payton or Greg Williams this thing. But, you know, they hit Roethlisberger again. Maybe he goes down. And and, and we saw Landry Jones last week. Barely could beat the Browns. No, that was, that's, yeah, that's a Obviously good Obviously didn't have Bell or Brown. I was going to say in his defense, he had nobody. <laughs> I mean, come on. I do have to say, though, Pittsburgh at home is just such a different breed. It is. It, yeah. Like, but it's, I don't it's care so who. weird. It's they I do are not just care home versus away, man. Who's quarterbacking the Dolphins? Well, you're you're taking you're taking Pittsburgh, right? We're so we're in agreement. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I mean, Pitt, I mean, Miami's played pretty decently with Matt Moore, also, and if, they have like yes. like you brought up too, Eric. Jay Jai does what he did last time. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, it's hard to stop. But the good news is Pittsburgh has a guy that can also rush for, mm-hmm. you and know, not to mention, 200 they yards. may have the best three-headed monster in the whole NFL. Oh, absolutely. Hands down. Yeah, I I can't argue that. Part. Yeah, but they've had it the last couple of years, and I mean, yeah, it doesn't mean you can win a Super Bowl or right. you know go far into the playoffs. And even in the regular season, I know regular season's over at this point. You know, you know, it's dead and buried, and it doesn't matter what they did in the regular season as long as they come up and show up in the playoffs. But even in the regular season, they had some struggles. And I still believe Steelers will win this game. Uh, that means that they would go on to play Kansas City. I say by two touchdowns. You know, I, I do think that this could go one of, obviously, could go one of two ways. I think that they're probably either going to, you know, get carried. They're going to win by two touchdowns, like Mike just said. Or I, I think it could come to a field goal. Um how many other how many other ways could it go? Obviously, but I think that the Dolphins are going to keep it close. Mike says two touchdowns. I say uh, Steelers probably by six. Six. If if Miami's defense could play to the caliber that I mean they're they have some guys on that team that that they can sue. They need to step up. I mean, who knows? Sue gets decides to get a little dirty in the playoffs. But that Chris, by the way, that Christmas Day, you know, because like I'm pretty convinced uh, that they can handle good defenses. Because of that Christmas Day down in the fourth quarter against the Baltimore Ravens. And and Tony and Brown was incredibly impressive on that drive. And like obviously Mike's not gonna let me forget, right, Mike? That three headed monster over there. You know, to have the check downs with Le'Veon Bell, it's, they didn't have him in the playoffs last year. I'll give him I'll give you that. So even having him line up at wide receiver, oh my god, that's just mm. another matchup. It's a game changer. Yeah. yeah it's, Hands it's, down. it's true, yeah. So I I think we're all in agreement. Can right? you imagine if Le'Veon Bell though? Stops getting suspended for stupid drugs. Yeah, but we've heard, we've heard year. on one hundred four five of the team. We've heard uh, our own brethren <laughs> on their shows <laughs> say that maybe it was good for uh, Le'Veon Bell to get that suspension you because it's saying, oh he's a running back now he can last longer not only this season but in the future. Could you imagine if he actually ever has a full season though? 
Think about it. He's what? I, bet, I doubt he already. cares about having a full season. Uh, you, in ter- I, mean, I mean, statistic for statistics, person. You know, is that what you're going for? You know, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're going for yeah, statistics. I, you're talking that, playoff run. Yeah. That's which, like a, that's like a uh, an NFL. We love to talk about that, right? I mean, here's the thing. For him, too. all he cares about is winning. I, I mean, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I believe that's what he cares about. I mean, Le'Veon's had a monster year since he came back, but D'Angelo. How about D'Angelo Williams when he filled in for him? He was great the first four games of the year. I mean, theoretically, yeah, he I mean, almost looked and, like and the Williams old came D'Angelo back and played, Williams played pretty well against the Browns last week, which is good to see that for the Steelers. But uh, we're all agreement, Steelers probably yeah, going to move Steelers. on. Yeah, I absolutely. think the AFC wild cards pretty pedestrian, but I think we're going to get the good games in the NFC for sure, and both of them are oh, the later yeah. games. Makes sense. Yep. We'll start with the Saturday night game that I was alluding to before: Seattle hosting a Detroit Lions team that you know they could have won the division, they could have dethroned. Those pesky Green Bay Packers, but they lost on Sunday go night. Pack, in the last... <laughs> yeah. uh, go Pack Go. Oh, Big yeah. Packers fan <laughs> right here. Yeah, I forgot so, about yeah. You know what? It's only our second podcast. Yeah, I forgot he was yeah, a Packers yeah, I forgot fan. I forgot Packers <laughs> fan. Uh, <laughs> we should be thanking the Redskins yeah. for that, for definitely being in, though, because you know, the Redskins losing made you guys definitely in the playoffs for sure. Oh, yeah. We'll talk more about that in a second. Yeah, but you're yeah. absolutely right. That was a Here's security. my question about that, though. Say Redskins win, right? Both teams, Lions and the Packers, I know you, you want that first-round buy, and I know one of them would have to be like, you know what, no, let's play because I want that first-round buy. But ha- can you ever see a team or two teams on the last game of the season know that if they tie, they're oh. both in the playoffs? That would but be if, if one of them situation. loses, they're not. Do you ever see like collusion happen in the NFL? A, is it legal? And B, <laughs> could you see that ever happening? Because what if, what if the Redskins did win? A tie would have meant, meant that both the Packers and the Lions made the playoffs. Yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, I, I don't think we'll ever see something like that just because, you know, the fans are the ones that basically control the well, NFL I think in a sense. If that happened, would the who would have had the – it might have been the – one team would not have – like one team would have had to go into Seattle and the other team would have been hosting the Giants. I'm not – yeah, I'm not 100% sure who that would have been. But that's an interesting uh, but, question for that. But if you put yourself in the shoes of one of those two teams, do you say if you're the one that would get the six seed, but then if you lose, there's no guarantee you do get in. Do you do you approach the other team and say, "Hey, what's up? Do you, you want to do this?" <laughs> no, you, I get the point of where you you yeah. know you you start to think it, about a, that because probably, what's best for the team, yeah. right? You know, it's probably that's a, a good dumb question, hypothetical, but, but in no, a way, it, it's, it's kind of true, right? No, it's true. I mean, listen. It, if it gives you a better chance to win farther down the road, you can't you can't not ask that question. Even if it's like for a split second, like, you know, maybe we could do but this real quick. Would Goodell issue punishments or I, what? There, with his punishments, I don't know what it would be. Maybe be like <laughs> I can't I can't even I can't even get into the mindset of Roger Goodell's punishments. So like, I would don't you even sacrifice know. a first round draft pick in order to make the playoffs for sure? Is Mike even in on this conversation? I yeah. personally would. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening over here, but yes. I personally want it, but... Anyway, do you think you just get to the game, or do you want to like win this, Mike? Uh, it's just, it's a really just dumb like hypothetical. Roger Goodell in general. I think he's a terrible... Yeah. Te- or, you know. it, it's really a dumb hypothetical. <laughs> so, yeah, that was interesting. I liked it. Uh, Seahawks at home. It's hard for me to go against them. That's why I would pick them, but you know, I'm a big Jim Call. I love Jim Call. Well, I thought he was... Uh, wrongly fired after a 2-14 season without his easily his best player back in Indianapolis. You know, Jim Mersey was like, yo, 2-14 after you, it was close to a couple years after he made the Super Bowl and you know what? You didn't have Peyton Manning. You had Curtis Painter and, and Kyrie Collins as your quarterback. You're fired. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was not a big fan of that, uh, but I love that he has that job now. I, I really want to root for the Lions, but I think going into Seattle is going to be tough. I don't think the Seattle team is as good uh, as they have been in the past, but I don't think Detroit it, that's has what we were talking about. I that's think it's close. Talking about with the Steelers, the Seahawks also have that. I think it's advantage. a close game, but I don't think Detroit can beat them. Personally. See, I'm on the other side. It, I, I'm so Detroit. It's like, I don't think Seattle's that good. They just, I mean, the 49ers, I mean, that game wasn't, I mean, the Detroit Lions have an offense that can keep up. All right. I understand they're on the road. It's Seattle, whatever. I get it. They have an offense that can keep up. Their defense isn't great. It's not good. But neither is that offensive line for Seattle. All right. Thomas Rawls has found no rush. Like, he's had one 100-yard game since he's been back. That's not the Seattle way. Seattle way is we're going to run the ball and then let Russell Wilson do his thing. Right now they're just saying we can't run the ball. 
hopefully Russell Wilson can do everything. And I think it's going to come to a roadblock this week against the Detroit Lions. I really do. I and every game the Detroit Lions are close, right? Like, have they gotten blown out? Like, really blown out? I don't think the this Lions. Year. No, I mean, they've been unprecedented, it, ridiculous. It's ridiculous how many times they've been down in the fourth quarter. And on top of that, one after being down in the fourth quarter. It, I, I agree with that, but it goes. This goes back to Pete Carroll having a home playoff game, seven and nine. I know Marshawn Lynch was an absolute monster, absolute, but absolute beast mode in that game. But anytime Seattle hosts a playoff game, no matter how good they are, I feel like I have to go with them in a way, because uh, just this year, seven and one, their their only loss came at home against Arizona two weeks ago. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I get just, it. I, I have a hard time, especially because if you look at the Lions postseason. Uh, accolades recently. Uh, I think that Cowboys game two years ago. I I thought they got uh, you know robbed in terms of some calls in that game, but they're just not. They had. I just can't. I just because of what you just said about how close games have been. Yeah. I just think like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, trust that's why Detroit, you can't. You can't trust them. And yeah. I trust Seattle a lot at home. You know what I also like now yeah. is they've found a little bit of a running game with Zach Zenner. <laughs> Zach Zenner, think- right? I mean, they don't have Theo Riddick, but Zach oh, yeah. Sanders like Cincinnati to be... found their running game with Rex Burkhead in Week 17. Too well, little, too late. Yeah, I, hey, you know, at least Detroit now is here, and they if have Detroit a chance to showcase had Riddick, them, right? I think they have a better chance. Truthfully, well, Zach Center can catch the ball in the backfield. I yeah, I agree with you, but Zach Center can catch the ball in the backfield. He's n- not a horrible runner. He's a pretty decent runner, and he's gonna fight for those extra yards each and single each and yeah every single time. Yeah. You know, this team is different without Earl Thomas. They're still a good defense. I agree with that. But you also have Marvin Jones starting to come back to life a little bit. I'm not saying like a stud wide receiver, but at least a smart guy. Absolutely absolutely (laughs) killed me in fantasy this year. Yeah, it killed me. In fantasy, absolutely. But he started off so hot, and then all of a sudden he just, where'd he go? Richard Sherman's going to cover what? The left side of the field? Can, I'm yeah. not afraid to throw. So he him. stays on the one side, though. No, but he stays on the one side, right? Yeah. He usually does. You yes. have Marvin Jones. So you know what? Whatever it gets Marvin Jones out of the game. Golden Tate has been a beast lately. Mm-hmm. He's had at least what five, I mean, six receptions it, it, in the it, last it, six it, games. I, mean, I know. I, exactly. I, agree. I mean, Eric Anquan Ebron, Bolden as well. Yo, Anquan Bolden, mm-hmm. Eric Ebron in the middle of the field. How do you cover him? I mean, they have done it. I mean, oh, they've Ebron done it. But been, that offense is a to lot me, he's, better he now. Could, Ebron could be Gronk. I just I feel like Ebron could be Gronk. I I just don't see he just well, how he's not healthy. got reached that next level. See, I, th- I I look at him as more like and the worst part is Gronk is really athletic. So mm-hmm. like it's stupid to kind of say like he's a freak. I, he's but a like freak. he reminds me of like that kind of like Aaron Hernandez, like he's or even Jordan Reed. Fast, like really athletic. And I know Gronk is athletic too, but there's something about Eric Ebron when he's out there, he just looks like a Bigger wide receiver. Big guys are not supposed to move like they can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're like Gronk is like huge, and I know it's a little off topic, but like Gronk's like huge, so like he's he's athletic. He's so very well. athletic, but he yeah. just doesn't look. It's just a it, different you know? type. Of yeah. It's like that reminds me of like Vince Wilfork. Remember all they always said Vince Wilfork had the best hands on the Patriots, and he's what four hundred oh, yeah. pounds. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so so, but no matter what you this is this is me. No matter yeah. what you're telling me about this, and I, like I said, I love Jim Caldwell. I really want to root for the Lions in this game. It's all going to come back to Seattle at home against a team I really can't trust. You know what we got to do is keep this uh, so next week's podcast we can um, recall this. Who's got the best record? All right, so we both have. So, we never really picked Texans Raiders, did we? Oh, I, I picked. Te- oh, we didn't. <laughs> Let's. I'm just gonna go Seattle I'll real quick. Seattle game. I'm taking Detroit. You guys are taking Seattle, right? Yeah. yeah, both Seattle. Yeah, so I'm Pittsburgh. taking Texans, Raiders, Raiders. Connor Cook, we trust. Connor Cook. Yeah, I, I don't know why I even asked. I, I just don't know, trust. I, I don't Raiders. trust Brock Osweiler. I trust Brock Osweiler to get benched by the second half, and Tom and, Savage and, to save them. And that's what I was saying about <laughs> right. <laughs> I was gonna give him two minutes, but okay, you're gonna give him the second quarter. Nah, he'll get to this. It, back, back to, but, but it goes back to what I was saying about the Seahawks. I mean, Houston having the home advantage, you know, is. Very important, and Oakland hasn't had any time to prepare, you know, like with Connor Cook that much, as much as as bad as those quarterbacks yeah. or Osweiler has been. They've had at least yeah. that time to quote unquote prepare. Well, Connor Cook hasn't had that enough reps, but I'm still going to go with, with Oakland. And then we both, we all have said Pittsburgh, I believe, unless you went with Miami. I don't know. No, no, I, I know. I, I know since I took Detroit, <laughs> it seems like I'm, but no, I'm, I'm Pittsburgh at home. I, I, and that's the weirdest thing. I, okay. My counter argument with, you know what I mean? I was just yeah. saying, like, oh, it's okay. Seahawks are at home. 
you know, I know how good they are, but yeah. I'm taking the other team. But right now, I'm saying Pittsburgh's really good at home, and I'm take, you know, I'm taking Pittsburgh. But there's something about Big that's Ben at home. That's how picks work, man. It's yeah. how you have gut feelings of who you think is going to step up and who's not. I'm I'm time for the, the game of the week. Monster. The game oh, of the week. Man. Not only the game of the week, but let's just can we recap. We we're talking about how we recap podcasts before. We got to recap last week's podcast. We were talking about how are the Cowboys for real. And that came up. We had our very own Mike, Mike James. James. <laughs> I think it's got to be the Giants, the best team in the NFC. Now, who do you got in this game? Giants, Packers. You know. <sighs> <laughs> I want to know what's, <laughs> what. My on, whole man. issue is, okay, come on, man. The, with the Giants is, I didn't know they were going to Green Bay last week. <laughs> Am I saying it's not impossible? No, because the last two times the Giants won the Super Bowl, right, they right. won in Green Bay. However, the way Rodgers is playing right now, I don't know if I want to face Rodgers at all. Now, would your answer be the same? It, I agree. Would your answer be the same if they were going to Seattle? See, if the Giants were going to Seattle, I'd pick the Giants. Okay. Hands down. Stone cold. See, I think this is actually, and as a Packers fan, I think it's actually a better matchup for the Giants. I think it's going to be a great game. Packers. I think, and, I, and I, I, I don't know if you guys listen to Byron Hunt today, who's absolutely crazy, and yeah. I love him. He was saying if they keep Rodgers in the pocket, Giants can win. I agree. That's going to be the key to this game. Yeah. I agree with that. And listen, they, I mean, Montgomery stepped up running game wise, but I mean this. I listened to that same interview, and Byron Hunt also said that they might have one of the best offenses in the league. Without that running game, I'm not sure we could go. Let's not go that far. If they, so had, it's a, not if really they had a running there. game, I would say absolutely. Yeah, I didn't want to ruin the validity of what you just brought up, but. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, yeah, the Giants' defense has stepped up and kept them in games, and this, this is going to be the the hammer that's yeah. going to come dropping from my perspective going into this game. I think if the Giants' offense doesn't show up, we should have another head coaching vacancy wow. in the NFC. Oh my! I never thought McAdoo should have got the job in the first place. Really, <laughs> really? Okay, what's the reason McAdoo was such a hot commodity last year? Oh, but look at that! Look at that Giants offense and how great it did that first year on the West Coast. Second year under the West Coast, they did even better. Best statistical ever by Eli Manning. Third year at West Coast, what's carried this team to an uh, eleven and five record? Steve Spagnuolo and that defense. We didn't give Rex Ryan credit for Anthony what Anthony Lid did when he uh, you know took over for uh, Quinn or uh, Roman Greg Roman. We didn't give Rex Ryan credit for the offense stepping up. Why should we give McAdoo credit for the defense stepping up? No, that's, I mean, that's a good point. And the um, offense just being very, very, very bad. They haven't, they, they just put up enough points to win, which is a good formula. Could the problem actually be Eli? No. If, if they didn't make the playoffs, would Why was the problem? Was the problem wasn't Eli last year? Yeah, but think about it this way. I have a lot of friends that are Giants fans, and they're all, they're all getting to the point where they're Eli's, getting sick of Eli. Eli's made some bad throws, but at what point do you say, oh, the offense, you know, what the, the positions he's being put in, Aren't are aren't good enough. Also, Eli Manning fair. can make the throws, but put him in the right plays. That's Actually, fair. have a running game. And when you bring in guys like Bobby Rainey, and I know Shane Vereen's been knocked up, but when you bring up these guys who can catch the ball out of the backfield in in short passes, Wait, use them. Shane Vereen's pregnant. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe I said, said he's sh- knocked up. <laughs> he's knocked. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Can we come on? Can we also bring up the Sorry, Giants? I had, to, I had to go there. Can we bring up the it. Giants' offensive line though, too, as being an issue? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty it's hard. It's pretty hard That's to be successful, my perfect right? Point. Unless he's saving these, all these play calls for. All right, we're in the playoffs now. I'm Ben McAdoo. <laughs> we're in the playoffs, the, and now I'm going to finally start calling up some good plays. <laughs> Is that the Ben McAdoo voice? The <laughs> inner Ben McAdoo voice? Because I like it. I just, I just, I like it. Say. No, but I, I agree with that. No, yeah. If the offensive line is so bad. Run some screenplays. The offensive line, let them in there, and and if Eli, I now, but back to what you were saying about Eli and your and, and all the fans, which I agree, a lot of them get on Eli's case. He has a hard time sometimes throwing the screen pass. So if it's there in this game and Eli can't make the throw, I will take back what I said and say it's not McAdoo, it's Eli. Yeah. But right now, I think that McAdoo. It's hard for me to say this because like. It goes everything against it. If you get tuned to a playoffs and an eleven and five record, yeah, I was gonna say be, he got he be got fired. into the playoffs. He shouldn't be fired. So, but this is the one time I'll go against it because he's it's not it's not like he's new to the he's new to the head coaching job, but he's not new to the team. You know, it almost seems like it's that offense has become less creative. So let me ask you this though. I don't want I don't want to no, interrupt it, your point, but let me ask you this: Tom Coughlin, they don't push him out of there. Are they still eleven and five to you with the, with the money they spent on the defense? 
Did that does their record change because Coughlin is the head coach? So they lose less. They, so McAdoo really made them win more games. They would have Coughlin if you kept Coughlin. I disagree. So you do agree? You, you, you well, say so that's you're true. saying it would be true then? Well, yeah, that's yeah. I I think well, I don't think the coaching change made that big of a difference. Truthfully, so you think they're still so eleven on, and five? I, I think they're ten and six, eleven and five, right yeah, in that range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. At best, twelve and four, hands down. Right. The only reason I'm going to say this is going to be weird. I'm going to say no to it because I feel like you got. Not, oh my god, I just put you guys into a group as Giants fans. But I just as <laughs> Giants fans as a Giants community, I just feel like they wanted Tom Coughlin gone all the time, like forever. I don't get it. It's it's funny. They'll, like they'll win the Super Bowl and then the next year they'll like you know they'll miss the playoffs. It's by the same like thing the with game. Manning, though. Too. Oh yeah, like, no, who, no. Who you know put that's up a great postseason. That's and, New York no. for you. But, like, yeah, at the same point, I'm like, oh, my God, Tom Cla- you know, uh, We're sitting over here with Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg <laughs> with the Jets, and they're like, ah, yeah. Eli. Well, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, Ben McAdoo. You know, I understand your guys' points, but you guys are in the playoffs. See, like, like I said. And before the first game. No, I get what you guys are saying, though. Like, everything like, I really stand no, for in yeah. terms of jobs. Like, well, if we, start, if we talk about Chip Kelly, I'll be like, oh, my goodness. That's, but, <laughs> but if we ever get to that. Let's let's finish it up on on, yeah. on the Packers-Giants. I'm going with the Giants, though, because I think Steve Bagnuolo has got this defense playing great. And you know what? I'm going to believe in McAdoo because, you guys, like I said, <laughs> I said if they lose this game, he should be fired. So he's on the hot seat. He's going to win it because he's going to finally say, you know what, guys? I'm going to run the plays. Good. And and they're going to run the plays. They're going to actually run a grid offense, and they're going to and, – and Victor Cruz might, you know, man up and, and be on the field majority of the snaps and make some big plays. I'm going to say Packers 23, Giants 20 on a Mason Crosby 42-yard winning field goal. Wow. Dang. That is descriptive. And you heard how did they, the, they get the other 20 points each team? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody fell down over and over again. <laughs> I'm going to take the Packers because I'm so even on this matchup. Like, I think it'd go either way, but Aaron Rodgers playing as hot you know, as he yeah, is. Green Bay's tough, too. And like I said, I've been hyping up they're, Seattle. Yeah, but Green they're Bay's in tough Green too. Bay. And then also, they're, you know, the Packers' defense isn't good, but they've played better over the last couple of weeks. And it, some but of that goes. You don't to, know what McAdoo's got brewing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what McAdoo's got brewing. But Clay Matthews is starting to get healthier, which was a huge problem. They didn't, yeah. You know, Julius Peppers there. Their little, uh, their middle linebackers are starting to play better there too. Now, I mean, and plus they might have two of the best safeties in the league. The combination that just no one talks about. Ha ha, ha ha, Clinton Dix, greatest name ever. <laughs> He's a man. But no, seriously, in all seriousness, though, they're very good safeties yeah. and. They can help compensate for the lack of cornerbacks yeah, the there. The corners are bad, but the safeties are make up for yeah. it. Not, they're I, not bad, I, but you know what I'm saying. I do think Odell Beckham could have like 205 yards, even in a loss this week. That that first time they played the Packers was a little different. I think like now it's like, okay, playoffs, their defense, you know, their cornerbacks aren't good. What's like, crazy is a few weeks ago we were talking about Mike McCarthy getting fired. I, I was never on board with that. I'm not like the biggest Mike McCarthy fan. I think he'd be more creative. Like he runs... He runs a lot of plays with fullback, the fullback in there, and I don't get it because you have Aaron Rodgers who can escape the pocket. Very good. You could just have another wide receiver out there and just give him give, another weapon out there. How do you not give the ball to Kuhn? Well, he's gone now. Oh, that's true, he is. He, it's Rukowski. John yeah. Kuhn is now a uh, Saint. Yeah, he's yeah, a New Orleans he's Saint. Saint. Yeah. That's right, I forgot about Rukowski, that. though, has filled that role really though. nice. I was like, what? Kuhn? Yeah. He, he made his, you know, he made his uh, money. That was a little high. Coon. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Coon. Coon. No, but yeah, they, I, I got Packers on. like him. a whale that was like trying to do the eco. <laughs> trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's his main call, folks. Yeah. All right. So that's our picture. You're listening okay, to the Sit Sports Sportside <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is the Sit Sports Sportside podcast on 104.5 theteam.com. Eric Hammond, Matt Hogan, and Mike yep. James. Here with you, and that's a perfect segue. We talk, I brought up Tom Coughlin, and that's a perfect segue. As we already made our picks, we'll see how we did next week's podcast. And you can obviously listen to that here on 104.5theteam.com. We talked about this yesterday when Hoagie wasn't here, but uh, yes, where not, do you think not Coughlin's going to end up? Though. So let's 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 indulge and in, in enlighten our our <laughs> listeners with what we believe on these things. We got a lot of head coaching openings, and and Tom Coughlin. <laughs> Said to maybe go back to Jacksonville. Buffalo might be a perfect he fit. He's not going back to Jacksonville. But we it's both believe call. that there's a better fit for Tom Coughlin. He won't be. I want him to go to Jacksonville. So He's bad. not going. I know. I just said. I know. I just, God, that would have just been awesome. Because they have the defensive pieces there too. And they, 
They really that's need a, yeah, a it's structure. Like a team that, like, is good. That's like a really good team to inherit. Yeah, they need Compare structure. Compare that to the yeah. Niners. Whew. Oh my God, Jacksonville's a lot better than going to. Lane Gabbert is pretty much going to be your starting quarterback unless they sign Colin Kaepernick and he doesn't opt out. <laughs> they need to draft somebody. Forget, the, forget like, that. But like in all honesty, that's who you're looking at as your starting quarterback, and then mm. your defense. They have no defense. You're just praying that Patrick Willis or somebody you know comes out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, decides like, hey, you know what? I'll I'll come and play for breaking two, news. Two Mike weeks. Singletary <laughs> comes out of retirement. I think Tom Coughlin. Yeah, Tom Coughlin in Buffalo is a pretty good fit, but. Um, it looks like Anthony Lynn's going to have that job, but after that last see, week. See, I disagree after last week. Well, I could see why. I mean, they looked atrocious. <laughs> I mean, he should, he should like, uh, you know, start, you know, talking to the special teams guys. That's where he should start. I mean, literally, I, I, I thought, okay, Anthony, all Anthony Lynn has to do is keep the bills in this game and it, this job is his. Can I say where I think he's going to go? Where? Is, I, now, to We're this moment, I haven't heard more about this, it. This is San Coughlin? Diego? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think he could go to San Diego if that job opens up. I think up. you're wrong. Well, you know what? Well, he really, right. want, he really wanted uh, Philip Rivers. So maybe yeah, we'll... I mean, there's his quarterback. <laughs> no, but it, but seriously, San Diego's a good spot, too. The, we, all the injuries they've Mike had. Mike and I had, had a different opinion on this. We, we, uh, if like Mike, Mike, this. It was, I think Mike, Mike is one that kind of enlightened me, if he wants to say it. I think he's going to Denver. I ah, know Gary Kubiak now. Yeah, that's a good fit, too. Now, the only thing about that is that they want to keep having a different coach every two years. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. Coughlin I mean, he's only old. have two years. That's a good a coach. point. I don't know how long his ticker could keep, you know, going in terms of coaching. I'm actually, going, yeah. But, you know, I think actually a good fit for him. Marv Levy on this show. <laughs> uh, not on our show, but on our, I want to provide the team uh, on LeVac and Goss. Uh, yeah. He's like, what, 90 something years he old? He, 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 he would entertain the idea of coming back and coach Buffalo. That's insane. I you love know that. something? Love I would. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract my Denver statement a little bit here. I, I think he'd be good in Denver. The place I think he could really make the turn the team around is San Francisco. With that, with that veteran knowledge and leadership, I think he could cha- turn that team around. They, I get, if Coffin could turn that around in one year, the Giants should have gone sixteen and zero if he saved the head coach. I get I get your point. Like he's that type of coach <laughs> though that he could turn around a franchise. Like in the yeah, sense of make like them more competitive. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, just like Eric just said, you might only have two years left of Tom Coughlin coaching. Two to three years. In all honesty, is, it, is he going to fix rebuild. San Francisco a rebuild. in two to three years? You know, he, oh. I, right, so I don't think He's he goes there. He's trying to win there. his third Super yeah. Bowl and walk off into the sunset. Honestly, you got me on this Denver idea now. I, like that sounds, goes, that sounds great. That sounds great. He go to the Super Bowl again. He's got a now, great defense. He's got a game. His philosophy may not be close enough to Kubiak. I know they want to hire someone that's more like Kubiak. Mm-hmm. Or say, uh, excuse me, shares the same philosophy, but why not? Yeah, I mean, the defense is there. That's, you know, Coffin won a championships with fantastic defense. <laughs> <laughs> Moving down a little bit. I like him in San Diego, though, too. I really do. That defense is weird seeing you at this Yeah, I, I decided to sit down. My legs are killing me. Um, but You're honestly, San, AM, Diego's, right? San Diego's one step away, right? How many injuries did they have? How many injuries did they have? Seriously, Keenan Allen, Danny oh, Woodhead. Keenan Allen. We were talking about this. Defense. I go, I go. Wouldn't it be great if the Jets traded for Philip Rivers? He's like, no, he's no. trash. I'm like, he didn't even have his number one receiver the last oh, two three years. Oh, Philip Rivers is trash. I hate Philip Rivers. Well, you you just him. you hate him because of his I persona. would rather he's... have Tim Tebow as my quarterback than Philip Rivers, and you wow. you know how I feel about Tebow. I what is this because of a professor? Is though. is it more towards Philip Rivers like as a person, or is it like his skill? Because I think he's a good quarterback. I gotta live. I think keys. Jets... I gotta feed. Yeah. I gotta play <laughs> ten more years. But how many? That was but terrible. He's... <laughs> yes, <laughs> I like the idea of it though. He's failed in the playoffs miserably when he's gotten there. Yes, he has had saying? a great playoff record, but. His teams weren't that great, other than the years when he had like LT helping him out, yeah. basically. Out of the all the out of all the head coaching firings, I think Mike McCoy was the dumbest. The dumbest. I, I don't think Mike, Mike McCoy is that bad of a coach. I think he's got a I, he's got a better chance of getting another job over Rex Ryan. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I think a lot of them do. <laughs> Even Chip Kelly might have a little better chance than Rex, but yeah. I think Chip Kelly finds his way as an offensive coordinator. Here's my you're, I mean, you're where, crazy. Yeah, where the heck is Chip going to go? I mean, he doesn't even get an opportunity to really to to get a full three years in. I mean, I heard Serge Ohio was looking for a new head coach. He's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> crazier Local high things, school. man. Crazier things. Yeah, Chip he Kelly's might... offense wasn't 
that bad this year. Sorry, Terry Jones, you heard that. It was a joke. You're not and the we- c- close to getting fired. The weapons. What weapons did he have offensively? That's what I mean. He only had Carlos Hyde, basically, right? Yeah, and he was injured you know, a good amount of the year. And he, his, Jeremy that Curley was put, his best. Well, I mean, I know he had Torrey Smith, but Jeremy Killer, like, statistically, I think was his best receiver this year. Why did the Jets ever let him go? They are as dumb as dumb as a box of rocks. Well, I, mean, I don't think that was their I mean, problem. Robbie I mean, Anderson, they, Quincy Anunua. I mean, I don't think wide receiver is necessarily the problem at this point for the Jets. But back to, I mean, I really feel like, I don't know. I think he could be an offensive coordinator somewhere. Like, don't be surprised if Josh. Well, the big. Oh my gosh, Patriots. Okay. Wait, she, she, Josh McDaniels. You think he's going to be Josh Jones? McDaniels? Please, he goes to be a head coach. Say he goes to the Rams. Chip Kelly <laughs> goes to the Patriots. Can I just walk out of this podcast oh, right now? Oh, <laughs> I'm already here first. Getting crazy over here, but this is getting crazy. I, <laughs> I don't think Chip Kelly sees the NFL again. I think he's gone. I think he's going back to college. If that's the case, and I, I think it's uh, stinks or whatever that they didn't tell him. Oh, you're fired earlier, so you could take an Oregon back. Yeah, that's a good point too. I mean, right? Yeah. And, but uh, out of all the openings right now, and I don't think we're going to see any more, right? Unless McAdoo. You know, there's, there's, here, here's an int- here's an interesting take. <clears throat> what's the best? What's the best job? What's the best job? I like that question. I'll let you right. go first. If I had to Is pick, if I had to pick one, yeah. Well, which one do I take? I'd want Denver, hands down. I want the defense because to me, you can build a team around the, a great defense. You can have a mediocre, mediocre offense with a great defense. I mean, let's for instance. Yeah, I agree with you. Rex's first few years in New York, offense was terrible with Mark Sanchez, but their de- the defense carried them. Am I wrong? No, they definitely did. Defense and running game. Ground and pound. That's what it does. All right. You guys are going to laugh in my face. I agree with you on that. Denver is a very attractive option. (laughs) But I'm going to get. You say Jacksonville, aren't you? I'm going to. God. Well, Jacksonville. No, Jacksonville. I like that job, too, to be honest with you. But I'm going to say Buffalo. And here's the reason when you go into different, different, you get different jobs, you want to have your own quarterback. Well, what better place to go get your own quarterback than a place that doesn't have a quarterback necessarily? I know San Francisco also has that as well, but the Bills are more shaped at this point to make a run at a playoffs with the team that they have now with their own quarterback as the head coach Brink coming in. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, if you can hold on to LaShawn McCoy, and the defense under the right scheme, under the right tutelage, and I think Rex Ryan came in and I actually thought he did a worse job with that defense than Jim Schwartz did. So if Jim Schwartz ended up getting the job, I think it would be archaic in a way because why aren't you just hiring them when Doug Marone left? Yeah. But I think someone come in and, and get that defense to play well. And what, what what are we coming off of? A team ending in a 108-year drought. What, what is there a worse drought maybe other than Cleveland, I guess, in the NFL right now than Buffalo? And what better prize as a head coach would bring would you have out of all the jobs? But Denver just won a Super Bowl. But here's the thing. Bring yeah. Buffalo to the playoffs. We talked about this before the show. Who's going to want to take that job after what came out from Terry Pagula the other day as to why Rex actually lost his job? It actually had nothing to do technically with his record and whatnot. It's the fact he said to him, "Who's already hey, on the hot seat, though? What's my future like? Oh, you're fired for three weeks. Who though? in their right for, for mind Mike, would Mike, want Mike, to take for, that for job for three weeks? For three weeks, it's like, oh, Rex is probably out. Rex is probably out. Everyone's saying it on radio, on on uh, TV, you're, everywhere. You're gonna fire Rex a guy out, for Rex asking out, a Rex simple question. He comes I, to you and says, what, what's my what's what am I here? Am I gonna get fired, man? I'm hearing this from everybody else. I'm asking the guy who can do it. What is it? And the guy's probably already had his mind made up, and he said, all right, fine, you're fired." Yeah, I think it was more, I get where you're coming from, but I think it was more of the fact, like, he asked a question and they just brutally told him, you're fired. That's it. Yeah, like, that's that's where your future is. <laughs> that's where it was going to be, and now because you asked us. Did anyone actually like, think what, Rex Ryan was going to be a head coach next Mike, year? Mike, you're, you're probably getting fired. They don't know yet. You walk into the office and you say, am I going to get moved up? They're like, and they lie to you. They say, you know what, you have a good chance of getting moved up. And then things start coming into place, and they're like, you know what? I think we have to fire him. They come to you a week later, and they say, you know what? You're fired. Do you want to be lied to when you ask about that? Fair enough. I'll give you that. It's, yeah. I mean, I'd rather know the truth. Right. So they're getting the runaround. I think that they should have they let him finish out the season, but they should have been like, you know what? You're probably going to fire you. Maybe Rex said that. Maybe he said, you know, if you're firing me, I don't want to coach against the Jets, but I, I don't know. You know why I don't mind that is I kind of want to see, like, 
if you're thinking about Anthony Lynn as a serious candidate, why not see what he does? You know what I mean? In a game without, you know, him calling all the plays and not having to, you know, have Rex Ryan there in his ear. But I think the to get back to our point, I think the best spot for me is I'm going to go back to San Diego. I really I love that team. That defense is pretty decent when they have all their pieces. Remember, Brandon Flowers was hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teo. Teo, Verrett. Right, I said his name correctly, right? It's like the first time I've ever said his name correctly. <laughs> but Bosa was, was, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't there in the beginning of the he, season. He, he, as long as his mom lets him uh, go to training and, camp, right? Yeah, and then just go to the offensive line. And then just go to the offensive side, right? Philip Rivers is a good quarterback. Well, I know you don't hurt. agree. Mm-hmm. Keenan Allen's a good wide receiver if he stays healthy. I know if he stays healthy. a big question. Woodhead Hunter if he stays Henry. healthy. <laughs> Woodhead if he stays healthy. Brandon Oliver, I think, actually, I, he's like my big sleeper for me. I think he, you know, he, he's been injured as well. He could yeah. be pretty good out of the backfield for them. How about Hunter Henry, though? Is I yeah. play that. If Antonio Gates leaves, and they have Hunter Henry, who's looking like he can easily You know take where that I want to see Gates go? This oh, he's retired. Sound ridiculous. I hope he's got one more year, and oh, I hope he gosh. goes to the Jets. He's... I want him on the Jets for one year. That's a that's One a... year. Why? Why not? Because it makes no he's sense. He's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Are the Jets going to make the Super Bowl next year? <laughs> Are they going to make the playoffs? Playoffs? If you can't, Possibly. if you can't, if, well, there's no, no LT, LT gave him the Jets first one, so why not? Why not Antonio oh, Gates? Oh, because he's slow. <laughs> I love LT. Oh, dude, but Gates, I mean, Gates Gates Antonio is, Gates. You put Gates on the Jets right now, he's easily the best tight end on the Jets. Easily. That's not saying much. Well, there, there's another know, thing, though. The like Jets don't even use their tight ends. Because we don't have any. Well, Ch- 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 Gale, some Chay Gale just there. retired, though, so they yeah. got a new scheme coming Yeah, in. I was going to bring that up. I was, the Jets have... God, but Antonio Gates... Did he get retired? Did he retire or did he get forced out? He, get, like, he, maybe he says watch, he retired. Maybe I'm watching too many San Diego Chargers games because I yeah, love where, where, Antonio where Gates. From this? <laughs> I just think they're a good team that it's like on the brink. Like I just think but they've that, had you know a what? couple bad... But you know what? They were a good team on the brink when Mike McCoy took over four years ago. Yes, okay. No, I get that completely. I agree with you, though. Also, yeah. did we even mention Melvin Gordon, too? <laughs> no, we didn't. Because yeah, it's going to be his third year after almost rushing for 1,000 yards this year. But he was Taylor's ACL this year. year. Yeah, so we're he's talking looking. About a lot of guys who have been out. But yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, you're going to get that piece back, too. So you mm-hmm. have a good running back, two good running backs. I'm sorry. The O-line's all right. O-line's decent. Defense is going to be pretty good, I believe. At least decent. Phillip Rivers is good. You got more draft picks? Yeah. Yeah, and then those wide receivers that they just... You know, Inman. Well, can Keenan Allen stay healthy? I mean, I'm just Keenan Allen's going to be the big he's question. He's been injured more than any other receiver. I, I can even yeah, imagine. he's had some bad breaks. It, you know, well, so get, no, Travis Benjamin's in Cleveland. No, he's no, no, he's, he's there. He's, he's there. there. He was also down Tyrell with injury Williams. for a couple of weeks. Tyrell and Williams it, like comes out of nowhere and to be a very good receiver for them. So as a number two, I guess you know, next year him and Keenan Allen. Hmm? Wow, it's a pretty good one-two duo, I think. Now, before we move on to a different subject. Uh, or a different topic. I don't know what we're going to move on to necessarily, <laughs> but who roll, do you maybe. who do you want? What type would you want taking over a San Diego? And, and wh- who who can actually make that team into a playoff team? Especially in a division where you look at like Oakland's probably going to be there again next year. It's Kansas City's probably going to be in this year. And then Denver. We think someone else will come in at Denver and, and also be competitive. So it could be one of the best divisions who could come in and be competitive in that division. I think a defensive-minded coach. I don't know who that is. How about Matt Patricia from the Patriots? Yeah, that's I, there you go. I, I think Patricia's getting a job. I agree with you. RPI grad, local, local. Yep. The guy has to get a job. He's, a, I mean, yes, I know he's, he's fit there too. Belichick, mm-hmm. but the guy, the guy's just, a genius just as yeah, much as Belichick. I just feel like maybe he, I, I, I can't speak for the guy. I just feel like he's comfortable being being under Belichick as a defensive I think coordinator. Though, out of all the and a place where he knows he's gonna win. I think I, I think McDaniels is is gonna get offered a job, but I'm kinda curious. He's already gone that route. To me. It didn't work out so hot for him. He could be in a division where he's gonna be able to win it every single year as offensive coordinator. I know people want to be the head man and get paid a lot of money, but I think McDaniels already kind of see it. Does he really gonna take another job? And the same thing with Patricia. I think that they seem comfortable as where they are. To me. But once again, I'm speaking Out of them. Out of all of the coordinators that Belichick's ever had, as that have had a chance to go be a head coach, I think Patricia would be the best one out of all of them. Honestly, well, there you go. A good fit in San Diego. I mean, San Diego. Back to my point, San Diego, because I yeah. clearly love the Chargers for some odd reason. Go Chargers, off- go! <laughs> yeah, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Their offense was able to keep up with Is every team gold this bolts, year. Go? I think he said go, go Bolts. Go Bolts, go. Yeah, go Bolts, go. But their defense 
as I've said, I'm very high on them. I think there can be a very good defense. You get defensive minded coach there, different team. Sorry, I just saw something really funny. You gonna share with the rest of the oh, class? Is this, is this a sports story or is this <laughs> Raiders signed quarterback Garrett Gilbert to practice squad? With Matt McGloin injured, the Oakland Raiders are adding a quarterback. The Raiders have signed Garrett Gilbert to the practice squad per Gilbert's agent Lee Steinberg. If McGloin's shoulder injury doesn't improve, Gilbert could be elevated to the active roster later in the week. Are you Connor kidding Cook? me? And Connor Cook, we trust. Connor Cook. All right, we have anything else to wrap? Anything else to wrap up on the NFL? I and mean, we can talk about what the Cowboys did in Week 17. Oh, Should Jesus. Dak have played? Should Romo have played more? Did Sanchez uh, solidify the fact he'll never get a starting job ever again in the NFL? Any other takeaways from Week 17 in the NFL? We just talk about how bad the Bills are. I think they've officially swapped with the Jets. Okay, what's worse? What What's worse? Let's talk about that play. You're probably going to bring up, right? I mean, okay. Out of these three, I, I saw these three. And one's a different sport, but you have this one where. Uh, it was a kickoff, and the Jets were covered in the end zone for a touchdown because the guy thought it was a play, like a punt, where if it goes into the end zone, it's automatically a touchback. Did you guys see the guy at the, uh, the Auburn college basketball game where he w- went into the huddle and no one noticed? Other than <laughs> yeah, I heard that. And How then do do recently, that? I think it was the other night, uh, Duke, Indiana, I believe, a women's basketball. They tricked them into it was in, Louisville. In, in, Louisville, there. Yep. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. They tricked them into thinking that out of the out of halftime. Into thinking that the defense would be on, that they were defending one basket when the backcourt was completely clean, but that was actually the front court for Louisville. Yeah. How crazy was that? Yeah. What's dumber? I think one, two are a form of trickery, and the other one was just complete dumbfounded. Yeah. So I, I mean, in my defense, watching the Jets game, it didn't even click in my head at first. Technically, it's an onside kick. Yeah. I know that's, but I'm like, that's 100% the rule. I've always thought about that. I've always thought, you know what? What if someone like punted it hot or kicked it high enough to where you could run downfield and catch I've it? I've actually like that. made was... that mistake on Madden before, not even thinking about it. <laughs> like you know how sometimes like when Madden the kicks bounce like on un- yeah, but you know how sometimes you just like, like you like running up the stats on the computer. Yeah, you're like oh I just want the ball as deep as I can get and just go. I've done that before. I was like oh crap I can't do that because now I don't have the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But how do you? But how do you literally just sit there watch the ball roll and go? <laughs> Because he thought it was like a punt. I think he thought Touch it was a down. punt. Ooh. I think he got confused about, he didn't know the rules. And the guy who actually recovered it, Doug, uh, I don't want to get his name wrong, but it was like Doug Middleton or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like practice squad guy. He admitted in the post game show on 104.5 the team. <laughs> Eric knows this because he worked the game. Yeah, I did. But he, Thank you. He, he admitted on the the show, oh, on, on the post game show in an interview that he didn't even know the rule and that someone behind him was like, Dude, fall on it. Fall on it. Yeah, we've like, seen stuff like this happen before. Yeah, I mean, Donovan yeah. McDab didn't know you could tie. I mean, nope. so just because you're in the NFL doesn't mean you know all the you know, simplistic rules in a way. Uh, but uh, I think the back to the, the, the guy who was returning it, I think he thought if it goes in the end zone, just like a punt, it's a touchback. Yeah, it's a touchback. It's, it's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah, you got uh, kind of sucky to see. <laughs> but did your comment about the Bills being worse than the Jets in a way, go, like, does that transcend that play? Or is that... To me, I mean, I know, I know the whole Tyrod Taylor issue, but you're really gonna play EJ Manuel and Cardale Jones, and I, if I still try and win that game if I'm Anthony Lynn, I start well, Tyrod. They, well, he, <laughs> it wasn't you know, his I think decision. We probably Rex got fired was because he didn't. He was like, no, I'm gonna play Tyrod Taylor and try to beat the Jets who fired me wrongly. And, <laughs> and think about but, this: they do not. They were like, Lynn, you're you're interim. You're playing EJ Manuel. We're not injuring Tyrod Taylor. I We're think not all for, you know, owing him $30 million. That game might have cost Anthony Lynn the head coaching job. Well, they don't want to sign Tyrod Taylor. They want to see if they have if they can do well without him. Right? I think that was kind of like a little bit of a test because, well, because they don't want to pay Tyrod that much money. They don't want to pay him the $40 million. If you're going That's back exactly. So why, but why play? And also, if he gets hurt out there, you're paying the man. But I there's don't that think contract. You saw that, right? And it's right, guaranteed. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there's, there's no guaranteed. way. I pu- And I'm so sick and tired of fans. And this is another thing. I'm so sick and tired of fans being like, oh, you got to do what's best for the team. What's better. Well, at that point, no. 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 I mean, the best it, team. Same thing for the, the team. best thing for the Jets. Exactly. The That's Jets the best thing for the Jets. Playing and, Hackenberg. had nothing to do with contract with Fitzpatrick. Yeah. But it would have been playing Hackenberg and, and, and getting the fifth, the fifth pick instead of maybe the sixth. Yeah. It's, I don't know why people freak out over it. It's just. But as a fan, as a fan, I'm one that actually likes to see my team win, and then when we lose, it's like, okay, see, I was tied. We have a worse draft pick. Yeah, I was torn Sunday. I I never want to see the Jets lose. 
I mean, I'm right. used to it, obviously, but I never want to see the Jets lose. However, when we were one in what six or seven in the beginning of the year, I wanted to lose the rest of the way out. I wanted the first. I want chances the first overall pick. You yeah, know, it's fair, and each fan is uh, entitled to their own feelings of what they want from their team. But at the but same time, I never want to see them lose. Right. You know, it's, it's tough. Just, it's tough. But back to your Anthony Lynn thing, and I'm going to bring this up. I don't think one game as as an intermed coach should have any bearing on on a head coaching job. Let's look at the guy last year uh, who took over for Joe Philman, Dan Campbell. He came in and his first two games, yeah, he 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 led that team to two very convincing yeah, victories. Yeah, very impressive ones. And then the rest of the way it was just you know very bad, very <laughs> bad football. So if those were the last two games of the season, Dan Campbell would have been head coach probably. Yeah, I, I, by that same logic. So I, I don't think it, it'll cost Lynn. Um, it might cost him the. Is it Bill's job possibly if they decide to go elsewhere? I don't know where else they would go. Like I said, I think that's a very attractive option for for, for some head coaching candidates. But uh, I think Lynn probably. I, I would say if I had to pick one, I think it would be Lynn for, for the that Bills. that sucks, though, is you got Tom Brady in going until the age of 45, supposedly. So yeah. you better be in it for the that's long so haul. That's scary. Because, yeah, it's terrifying. Like if he actually does, what, is Tom Brady 38 or 39? 39. Okay. 39, yeah. So what, you got six more years of that? <laughs> if he's like, or at least like, and he's not getting any but worse. What's sweeter, sweeter of making the playoffs. Not only, like I said, this goes back to the Bills haven't made the playoffs in forever. It wouldn't be sweeter than to not only make the playoffs and yeah. get this drought over with, but beat the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, look at you know baseball. Theo Epstein kind of did the same thing. Chicago, right? Yeah, exactly. go win one for Chicago after you just won one for the you know Boston. True. Yeah, so I see that point completely too. Definitely makes it a little more attractive. All right, something we didn't, and you're listening to the Sit and Sports Eye podcast here on 104.5, theteam.com. I'm Eric Hammond, uh, Matt Hogan, and Mike James. <laughs> we didn't get to touch on Who? the NBA. Just Come on, man. We didn't get to touch on the NBA. A lot to talk about, too, in the NBA Last, lately. Uh, podcast. And since that podcast, actually, no. But uh, there was that big Warriors-Cavaliers game on Christmas. And Cavaliers came out on top. Had a lot to happen since then. Uh, George Carl apparently wrote a book. I mean, who doesn't write a book nowadays? Said some things about Melo. Said some things about Damian Lillard, which I think would be interesting to talk about and see where we stand on that. Where would you guys like to start, though, in the NBA? I think we could go right to the George Carl okay. yeah, comments. You know, right. There's a lot going on with that. I can't really say too much because I never technically paid any attention to it. But <laughs> I think I just think <sighs> I'm not a big George Carl fan. I. It's, you know, I don't know. I think Mike's speechless right now. Speechless. George Carl left you speechless. <laughs> I'd say something. Furious George. Furious George. What a name. Uh, but I, I kind of want to talk more about uh, the Damian Lillard comments more than the mellow ones. Uh, A, because I really want to, you know, I don't really have much to say about mellow other than I kind of agree with everything that's been said about him by Phil Jackson or Joe Carl. Anyway... <laughs> That guy, <laughs> guy's never gonna win an NBA title. And it's gonna be his own well, fault. Yeah, but it's yeah, I, I think fault. that what George Carl said about uh, Carmelo has been evidenced by his play and by his demeanor. He he's always been a lackadaisical guy. He's never been no, known as a guy who plays the defense. It was almost like someone's actually saying it. And obviously, he wanted to get headlines, these people to actually buy his book. The worst thing he said about Melo was the whole father thing, and I don't even want to get into that. Yeah, that 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 you know just. Real quick, I'm not going to get into it, but that was wrong. Too far. But everything else, though, he, that's not wrong. That's his opinion about right. why, you know, who Melo is as a and it's player. Not, see, for, with Lillard, he never coached Lillard, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, but so, Melo, he coached him for a very long time. That was his coach in Denver. So He's coached his whole time in Denver, actually, wasn't he? I know uh, he he's went to way. the Kings too. He had the Kings last year. He was with the Sonics well, beforehand. No, he, he was he, in the finals with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But I was going to say, though, isn't, it was, he was Melo's coach his whole time in Denver, wasn't he? The whole time that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think but, anyways. but back, 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 I guess we'll get to the Lillard comments. Because what he said about Lillard was I'm looking at this team and. Uh, the gist of it, if I, I'm going to find him. How about George Carl coached the Albany Patroons at one point? He did. So he no, was. 100% did. And Roger Wyland, our own, Roger Wyland covered him when he was on the Patroons. <clears throat> so did uh, Phil Jackson. So George Carl, he basically Not forget. he basically just said, you know, Damian Lillard was getting too much attention, right? 
Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. And it, yeah. he basically said, I'm looking at this team right now. I think this team has a lot of talent. I'm looking at them, and I'm like, why are they not higher in the standings? And my only answer has to be, and it's not like he's, he's not even, this is what he said has to be. He's just, he's, he's, it kind of almost was like an observation. Yeah. And who the heck even asked this question? I know, right? Like, who was like, you know what? Did he like tell the person, oh, ask me about Damian Lillard? You know, you know or, what it is? But he basically said that I think he's getting too much attention, and I, I personally agree with everything he said. I think he's just being brutally honest. Like yeah, I think exactly a lot of times, yeah, oh, I think yeah. a lot of time, you know, a lot of time in the media, you get, especially in the sports world, somebody will ask a question like that, and then they'll just circle around it, like, oh, they're just having, you know, tough schedule, players are hurt, yeah, you know, they're tired. He just brutally thought what you know, mm-hmm. he said he said his opinion. That's what he thought. People are like, oh, he's hurting his chance of getting in the Hall of Fame, and it's like, why? It's like, come on, that's, that's yeah. just a dumb thing. I mean, I think I mean, right now he's just a guy who really likes basketball, and I think he, really in his ultimate goal. Is to maybe wake up Damian Lillard, a guy who's out there making rap albums. Yeah, he, it, and he's on a team right now that's competing with the Denver Nuggets. Who did anyone think think the Denver Nuggets or Sacramento Kings are going to be like a playoff team mission necessarily? They're competing with them to, get, to even be the eighth seed in the Western Conference right now. Yeah, which is sad because they are loaded with talent. Right, that team is that team should be and better. No matter where you look right now, you do see a lot of Damian Lillard on Adidas commercials. You imagine and, if Portland actually kept Lamarcus Aldridge right now. Well, they tried. Yeah, they tried they their hardest. Tried. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, they'd be yeah. even more loaded. But I just think that Lillard needs to... The, the leadership... And they Lillard's actually been out the last couple of games. They played very well in a couple of games without Lillard. Yeah, they believe, have guys like CJ McCollum and Alan Crabb that can pick up the load when he's not there. I think it just kind of shows that you know Lillard needs to step up and be a leader on this team and not necessarily... Uh, go out and, and like I said, the the rap album and all that like it's it's awesome and people are, you know fans are gonna yeah they're gonna uh, uh, flock to it. His commercials are funny, um, but this is where this is where I go back to for Damian Lillard and this is he we had a commercial, I believe with uh, Barry Sanders, I think LT was there, Carl Malone, and I think Chris Webber, and I, I I think I got all this right where they're sitting there and he's talking about he, the last thing he wants to be. Is one of those athletes that wound up with no rings. Yep. And when I saw him do that commercial, I'm, I'm sitting there like, yeah, this is funny, you know. And then you got Carl Malone coming in, uh, you know, who had he just made burgers, and it was a funny commercial, and and they were all getting upset because Lil was talking about not winning any rings. Um, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, yeah, this is funny, but dude, what if you never win a ring? <laughs> yeah. At at that same point though, could I argue the fact that Chris Paul does the same thing? Yeah, no, Chris Paul. My biggest thing with Chris Paul right now is he's never played in the West. Uh, yeah, any I, conference champion. Like what you said, though, I, I do conference think finals. I think the Clippers are a lot worse without Chris Paul. Yes, than, oh, uh, you yeah. know, but you know, I'm not saying L- that. Lillard is a superstar. Out. Anyone yeah. out there listening right now who's getting infuriated listening to me, I think he, I think he's a star. I, yeah. I, superstar might be a little. I don't know. I don't he's know. Up, my my definition is different than Mark Cuban's apparently because I think Russell Westbrook still is. First and foremost, yeah. nobody but, cares about Mark Cuban. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. He's as dumb as Jerry Jones. Well, see, yeah, I, I like Mark Cuban, but there are some I comments. Think he's entertaining. There are some comments that are completely. There are certain out comments there. I have agreed with him on, and I don't. I think bring them the, up on the two show stupidest be... owners in all of professional sports both real, both live in Dallas. Hands out. The dumbest. <laughs> the dumbest owners in sports. They're also probably the richest in their sport. They are. <laughs> so I mean, I, I'd like to be as dumb as they are, but I. I well, you know um, what I'm saying. No, I, I get your point. They say All some right. things that are real quick, weird. Um, some, uh, what is it called? Uh, Ooh. pop culture news or uh, current, current news? Anyway, about okay. about Damian Thiller. Do we mar- remember uh, this past weekend? Ronda Rousey kind of fought, she fought again. Oh yes. Yeah, hey, we, what happened? Yeah, yeah, she kind of <laughs> she kind of uh, didn't do her best, but keep fighting, yep. Ronda. 45 seconds. Damien, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so mean. She's been so dominant uh, for so long. But minutes let's get after to this that, news. and I'm pretty sure he deleted this tweet. He tweets, this is uh, Damien Lillard. Hope Ronda Rousey is fine mentally and spiritually after this fight. Most of you will never know the pressure, yet y'all go and talk crazy, shaking my head. Now, that kind of seems like an indirect tweet about George Carl, what people said about him. You know, like stay like Gerald, George, like like, like uh, Terry Stott said, stay in your lane. Like, don't talk about this team. But to me, that that's kind of like a uh, a wimp way of you know. It's like you don't, you're never gonna understand the pressure. It was a way to, all these people are gonna be talking. Well, man, go out there and show it on the court. It was know? a way and, to respond without yeah. actually saying the words. Yeah, and guess what? Yes, there is a lot of pressure on you because you're a very good basketball player. 
Look what James Harden's doing right now. Yeah. A lot of people thought, you know, there's a lot of knock on James Harden was, oh, the dude's just going to, you know, be a ball hog the entire game. He's never going to lead them mm-hmm. to, you know, a great record. I mean, no, a couple years ago, they were at the two seed. They were still the two seed a couple years ago, but uh, there just seemed to be a lot on James Harden. Well, this year, he's stepping up. I think he's having an MVP type season, even though I still give it to Russ at this juncture. It's either him or Russ this year. And I know there's the argument of LeBron should win it every year. I don't know what you guys think about that, but just, I, to, just to put a pin in the end of this Damian Lord yeah. thing, I think he just needs to. You know what? Put the put the uh, earmuffs on. Put the you know things in the ears. No. Not listen to George Carl. And you know what he can do to shut up George Carl is go out there and lead Port, Port, lead Portland Trailblazers to a, to a playoff berth. And and listen that that go team some, that team somewhere. gave Warriors fits last year. Yeah, fits. Yeah. And they're, they're still competing with the Denver Nuggets yeah. for the A seed. Come on, it's <laughs> which is funny because it's George Carl's you know most famous. <laughs> Team, for, yeah, you know, he coached the Kings, for, right? He yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, right now, current standings, the Kings have the eighth seed by a half game over the Trailblazers, yeah. and the Nuggets, and the, the Nuggets. Nuggets and the Trailblazers are tied. So, if anything, Carl should be saying, you know, a good thing the Blazers aren't good this year because two of my former teams can make the playoffs, or one of the my former teams. Make the playoffs. I, I don't think well, he likes I was the, say, there's yeah. no way both. <laughs> I don't think he likes the Kings that he much either like anymore. I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> him and uh, Cousins over there. I mean, let's actually, for once, we can actually touché, talk about... <laughs> touché. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the top, it's the top seven in the West, and then it's, like, everybody else. Yeah. No. Yeah, like, no. nobody's nobody else. The top seven are above 500, and nobody else is close. And, like, the Eastern Conference is the Cavs, and then two through ten are kind of kind of close, right? Uh, well, the Raptors are up there, too. They're at so least four, they're four, through, yeah. four through ten are close. Four through ten. All right. South East I mean, are also... Cleveland's and 26 and 7, Toronto's 23 and 10, Boston's 20 and 14, Charles 19 and 16, and everybody else is 19 to. Now we could. Okay. Actually, have the, the Nets are worse than the 76ers this year. Oh, so far they have. They lost the 76ers, yeah? Oh, yeah. I mean, Jeremy Lin hasn't helped. We signed him to his contract, and he just. God. They're a half injured. game worse than the 76ers right now. I never thought I'd say that. But guess what? Guess what? Oh, uh, you're happy about possibly getting one of these good picks? One of these, you know, one of these good top guys? Nope. You're gonna be sitting down at the twenty something pick wherever the Celtics yeah. end up. So Oh, that's right. Billy King somewhere. I just <sighs> hope he's having a rough day. Stupid hope not a rough year. Oh yeah. That never know until it's Actually at the time <laughs> it wasn't a bad trade, happening. but now it was. At the time it was a uh, Are you sure they don't have it back they don't have they're not back to the normal spot this year? I thought last year was it. It's a switch. This year they switched. the The Celtics have the right to switch with the Nets. That's right. Next year they just have the Nets pick. That's right. Gosh. So it goes James Young, who most likely will not be a Celtic past this year. Nope. Jalen Brown. He would. And then whoever they get this year, and whoever they get in the next year, and most likely the Nets aren't going to be good enough. Maybe they won't have a lottery pick in 2018. <laughs> maybe they'll. Maybe Kenny Atkinson will get them to be, uh, you know. Maybe they're they still, they're not talk the they'll probably be like an eight or nine lottery pick, but I wish they could sweet talk Phil in the coming out of retirement and come coach. I he's, wish. He's well, those, what he, but what would he do for that? He, he's not going to make them all. The talent level is not there, man. He's got those health concerns too. He'll never come back, right? But yeah. what, what? But like even the greatness of Phil Jackson. I'm going to say Zen Master is a Zen Master, but <laughs> you put the Zen Master, you put uh, uh, back any of these guys, these coaching greats. I don't think they make this team a playoff team. Do you? Not right away, but they could make a difference. Like, I'll could, give you that. Could, they could, could probably make a difference. But this could t- Phil the Jackson win in team. Philadelphia? No comment. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, like, I, I think in the NBA. But, but would, even Phil Jackson says it himself. It's yeah. a superstar league. You need the talent. Yeah, that, out of all the leagues, out of all the professional sports, the NBA is so superstar-like. If you don't have a superstar on your team, you're not going to compete. And, and if Brooke you Lopez do compete, is not a superstar. Who? Brooke Lopez. No, he's a but he's a, oh, he'd be yeah. a very good, he's good two or third two or three uh second or third option. Oh yeah. He, he, but he's no super he's making way too much money for what he does. But the way the NBA bargaining agreement has actually, you know, started to go into effect, you got guys like Tyler Johnson who's having a very solid season for Miami by the way. I uh the, he's make they're making a lot of more money than you if you look up his salary you'll be like he's making that much money. Tyler Johnson this guy never heard of out of Fresno State, but that's just the way the NBA nowadays works because a lot of people are getting paid. And that's almost how all sports work, except for the NFL, basically, now. Well, you're the MLB going, is the only one with guaranteed contracts, yeah, right? Yeah, you're going to pay – you're at this point now, you're going to pay these players this much money. Like in baseball, especially, like I always come to the point where I'm like, how did this guy get paid this much? 
are you kidding me? But then you realize, oh, okay, because that's how the market is now. That's the market in free agency. And it's going to continue in the NBA, mm-hmm. you know, especially with that. It's it's going to keep going up. There's going to be players worse than Brooke Lopez that are going to get paid more than Brooke Listen, Lopez. Listen, Otto Porter, he's having, he's having a solid year. He's having 15 points per game. He's done better. There's talk about him getting a max deal. Now, Mac, if you're talking about max deal, you're talking about the best players in the league usually get the max deal, right? Otto Porter, is he really a max deal guy? He's probably going to get a max deal from somebody, and, and the Wizards not. are going to have to match it. That's a problem. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a problem, but that's also what's going to happen. Yeah, and the Nets, gave, the Nets gave see. Tyler Johnson a lot of money. The, the Heat matched it. The Nets gave uh, Alan Crabb a lot of money. The uh, Blazers matched it. So, you know, it's not like you can't really throw teams off on restricted free agencies anymore because they're like, you know, we can actually afford this guy with that money. Yeah. You know, and it's like it, it, I'm gonna tie this into Brock Osweiler. It all depends Wait, on what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though, because because look at the Texans. Is Brock Osweiler worth seventy two million dollars? Absolutely not. Brock Osweiler should feel privileged, but they needed a quarterback, so they him. paid with the. It's like yeah, the, no, exactly. It's, it's any t- it's any professional sport, though. Yeah, if mm-hmm. you need somebody, you're gonna pay the money but necessary. It, it's a it's a mix, right? You yeah. want a GM that can say, you know, what, we need this guy. Yeah, but let's not pay over market value. Let's not, you know, like what the Denver Broncos did. You know what? Trevor Simeon probably can. So let's go back. Before we, you know, let's go back to the NFL for a second and ask this, ask that question. Brock Eisler, Broncos gave him the money. The Broncos made the playoffs this year. Did he, how much better did he, does he do than Trevor Simeon did? Right? Yeah. What's, the, what's the answer yeah. on that? We'll never know a certain answer, but yeah. are they a playoff team? If they gave him the money. Yeah. No, that's a good point. That's, that's the way sports is now. Yeah, but let's uh, let's talk about it. and I see that right on the rundown here. It seems like a dumb question on the rundown. No offense to our rundown Ooh. maker. We won't say who that is. <laughs> but can the Warriors win the title? I'm just looking at. That's the question. Of course they can win the title, right? But are they the, the real question now? here is: Do you think they will, or do you? Where do you where do you stand on the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant? Obviously this year. I don't think I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they make it out of the West. All right, wow. so I, I, I love I like the uh, I like the I like variety. You know what? Because who do you think could beat that? Call me crazy. I'm going to say if it comes down to it. If the Thunder get their hands on the Warriors, oh no! I think Russ. I think Russell takes KD to school, and they can do it. He would even if he took KD to school. Clay Thompson and Stephen Curry. Will carry the rest. That's where right. I like get nervous from. Okay, that standpoint, they do have a good surrounding castle around Westbrook, to the point where it's solid. But God. they're one matchup so far this year, and they're gonna have three more, I believe. Yeah, you're gonna they looked it. overmatched. The Thunder look overmatched because Westbrook is Westbrook. They don't have any other. Like, Ola Depot steps up. That's the only other possible playmaker. But then you he got ha- Steph as a playmaker, Clay as a playmaker, and Durant as a playmaker. You need guys who can inside. Stephen Adams isn't an isolation type of guy. You need his cancer to Russell. And you got Popovich sitting Russell. there at twenty-seven and seven without Timmy, without Timmy, without Duncan. They've kind of been doing without Timmy. I mean, even when Tim was on it last year, it was still Leonard, among others. And um, but yeah, I mean, without Timmy, man, I mean, this this is still a good team. Can't why Leonard is the, has been the team for the last couple of years now. But uh, here's one. Here's like a little rant. I kind of want to go on in in a little bit for here. We weren't. We didn't have. We obviously did not have a podcast over the summer. Yeah. Kevin Durant yep. left, and so back to what Mike was saying is, you know, I think the Thunder could take down the Warriors, which I would love that. You know, I, I love to think that Russell Westbrook series. It could be a really close series, and I will launch. Stranger things have happened though, so it's possible. Right. No, I think it's possible too. It's just we talk the Rockets, Clippers. There's a lot of teams. So if they can get to the Warriors, I don't maybe trust the Clippers. I don't. I know Doc is their them. coach. It's hard to trust them, but they get, if they need to get healthy, because Blake's out again, Chris Paul's been out again. This, this team just needs to stay healthy. Yeah. But back to what I was going to get at here, and, and, and this is why it was the weakest move, and I believe this was said by Stephen A. Smith. The weakest move by a superstar ever was Durant going to Golden State, and we didn't obviously we didn't have the podcast then, and this is my chance to you know. Express some feelings that get I have little, about it. Get the little haterade out. Yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> when when LeBron went to Miami, wait, the, the Heat weren't good. Like Dwayne Wade, we, you know, was had injuries. They weren't a good team. And he goes there and then they do their thing. But coming off a of 73 and 9. The worst, absolute worst part of that whole Miami Heat thing was Chris Bosch. Hands out, if you ask me. Terrible, 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 
Awful. I'm, I'm not comprehending, but I still want to move forward <laughs> in my rant. Yeah, let's, let's see the rest of this rant. And then we, yeah. we go to Chris Bosch. He went on to a team that was 73-9, and nine, best record in the history of the NBA. And they lost, obviously they lost in the finals, but the year before that, they won the finals. So it's like, okay, this team definitely doesn't need help. So, you know, if they win, I agree with the fact, if they win the title and Durant wins one or two, maybe three, if he stays in, uh, in um, Golden State that long... Yeah, he's probably going to get a lot of credit for it. He'll probably say, oh, look how many rings KD had. You know, He went there and did that. But I think when you look at it, it's like, well, no, they could have done that anyway. The legacy there, to me, will take away because they could do that anyway. And this is where this is where it's the coup de grace. This is where it takes the cake. He was on a team that if he stayed, he's got a, he's got a superstar in Russell Westbrook. And guess what? That team had him up 3-1. So say he wanted to stay at the homegrown guy. But in his mind, he was like, you know what? I don't think I can do it in OKC. I have to go somewhere else. That was not the case. He could have stayed the homegrown guy and been the best team in the NBA still because they had talent-wise with all that they had, I think they still could have been better than the Golden State Warriors, especially because after they were up 3-1 to one and it took a Clay Thompson, a miracle game six to beat them. And guess what? They, the Warriors beat, beat them. Yeah. The Warriors beat Durant. And, guess, and, and that to me, Warriors win two more titles. Well, guess what? Even though the Warriors didn't win the year they beat Durant in, the, in that conference finals, when, they were, when they, were, they were down 3-1, I'll look at it and say, you know what? Curry got his third ring. Thompson yeah. got his third ring. Oh, and Durant, he got his second. And guess what? He got beat by the same team when he was on a different team. But they yeah. still have to. I still think if they if they make the finals, they still got to beat the best player in the world. Right. Regardless. Regardless. You, guys, you guys weigh I in what, on this comment. As a fan, I get where you're coming from. And I hate seeing it. But I got to tell you, as a human being, I don't mind it. Like as a, because here's my thing. This is what I'll say, right? Would you rather live in you know Oklahoma or you know LA? Okay, you you're making this about location. No, but I'm I'm just saying like from, jet, from like all right, for me, I went all to right. school for but you didn't for, realize for, they real, actually in Oakland, right? Not LA. Well, okay, but I'm just saying no, for I understand different where he's going yeah. Oakland, yeah. Oakland, California. Catch say, California, all right? Say for me, college, right? I had a decision to go to a very cold school, mm-hmm. weather-wise, or well, coastal Carolina, where I people can get by drafted the beach. by Buffalo. They don't want to go to Buffalo. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. I mean, it, I get it from a competitor standpoint. You you know, stay there. It's kind of the weak move to go there. But man, if you can go play with your friends, because him and Draymond Green are close. That was a, another reason why he went there too. Also, we have to look into the fact that Russell Westbrook and him clearly weren't as close as it was made out. They weren't. Because if you're going to leave... He was Russell, closer with Harden. He yeah. Was closer with James. That's exactly. If you're going to leave him to go to Golden State... You imagine if I those just three think, were still together. I just think as he... But, like, but, look what, but look what Russ is doing, though. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not taking anything like so, away in that aspect. But what I'm saying is... If he couldn't is, get it done with Russ, doesn't it make him look weaker that the oh, team that's already getting it done... Yeah, I, I get that completely. It, it, it makes with, him... Yeah, know. it makes him look weaker, obviously. Yeah, I get that point. I completely understand it. It does make him weaker. The legacy will never be the same as if he won one in OKC. But also realize if LeBron... If LeBron wins one in Cleveland, like he already did, right, and he doesn't go to Miami, is he really going to beat MJ's ring title for how many no. he's got? No, right? His legacy will never be that high. So do you almost think sometimes maybe like a player like Durant's like, okay, they're not even comparing me to Michael Jordan now. Do I really care like how they think of me in the sense of like my legacy? I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. I could go live and play, you know what I mean, here that. instead. If he's, if, he's, if he's standing there and he if says, that's you know the what, Eric? Why? You know what, Eric? I listen to your podcast all the time. <laughs> Kevin Durant's listening to sports, yeah. uh, sports uh. No, but if he's, if he's standing right behind you and talking to me or where you are <laughs> and talking to me and he's saying... You know what? I didn't care about my legacy. I cared about winning titles. Yeah. If he came and said that, I said, I don't want, I don't care about scrutinize. You I can say, all, you, can, you can scrutinize me all you want. I don't care about it. I'm going to tune it out. And I just want to be a basketball player. I wanted to go where I wanted to go. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I did not, I didn't care if I was being scrutinized, but you can do it all you want. Yeah. I'm fine with that. But guess what? What comes with the move, just like you get to go play with your friends and having a you know, better climate and a better city comes with the scru- scrutinization of what I think was a very, very weak move, and he'll never have the same uh, prosperity in my mind, even if he wins there, than if he he just stuck where he was. 
The person that should have left which should have been Russ. Kevin Durant moved with Seattle to OKC. If someone was yeah. going to leave, it should have been Russ. I know this is a completely different situation, but I'm just wondering. If Carmelo Anthony decided to go play with LeBron James instead, like say that move worked out. Somehow Carmelo Anthony was playing with LeBron the last couple of years instead of being in New York. Would his legacy be a lot better than it is now? I would have called it, you know what I, this, I don't even know what I want to say. I would have think if Melo goes to play with LeBron, it would be a brilliant move for Melo. That's the only shot he's ever going to win a title. Well, no, I'm, just, I'm just thinking. <laughs> only I'm, shot he wins I'm trying to think of like another star player yeah. that like kind yeah. of stayed. Well, I know it's completely opposite too yeah. because OKC, very good. Like, mm-hmm. just as you said, they were up 3-1. to one, but A you team also, that was like, after all that time, yeah. they finally were on the verge of being <laughs> the best team in the Western Conference. It's, you know what, guys? I'm going to leave. Yeah. It, the NBA is going to have the biggest competitor of those. The NBA is always going to be like that. You'll never see that in the MLB because of the way contracts are and how teams are set. You'll never see that in the NFL. I think it's just something that we're going to see for years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that, that I guess that's what bothered me the most. They were on the verge of being better than Golden yeah, State. Yeah, went seventy three and nine in the regular season, the best record ever. They were better three to one. They were on the verge of it. They couldn't close it out. But I blame them. They couldn't close it out on two people, Westbrook and Durant. Both of them, not just not just Durant, both of them, and they were on the verge of it. He stays there, they could still be good. They like, sign a one year deal there, and if, then if you want to go to Golden State because because you guys weren't as good as I thought you might have been, fine. I I don't know. No, I I get it. I I'm I'm very much towards the point of outside the sport also. Why where I, where I kind of see where players decide to go somewhere yeah. instead of I somewhere think else. Win. I think the Warriors are probably going to win in the end. I think Cleveland Here's takes it down. Here's my biggest question. Well, you know what? Sticking, sticking on the whole Durant Westbrook topic, really quick. Mm-hmm. Durant left. You can argue Westbrook's numbers have gone up as they should. They did. When remember he was injured two years ago, these numbers went up. Yeah, they didn't make the playoffs, though. I mean, I guess that's a yeah. He, everybody's like, "Oh, LeBron wins." I think LeBron just gets handed the MVP just because he's LeBron. Probably not. Probably not this year. But does anybody beat Westbrook? If he does. If he if he continuously, we we're just talking about. I think I think James Harden is the only one that has a chance at this point. Yeah, I, but I mean, it's only he, two months. Wait, I two, think I think there's been two years where months. LeBron should have won, but he hasn't because he's LeBron James, mm-hmm. and like you know, people get tired of seeing the same MVP but over Westbrook. Right. Westbrook though, this year averages so far. a triple double all year, which he still is. Right, he is. I don't think. But do you know how close? Do you beat know beat how close James Harden is to having a triple double? It's a couple rebounds away, and his assist numbers are actually a, a point and a half. I think one and a half above Westbrook. All right, Westbrook. All right, let's. All right. So if you're someone who votes and thinks that record is better, West uh, Harden's record might record might end up being better. I, I hate All right, let's look at this. I, I I'm not a big fan of it either. But I I'm hate the MVP. I got the stats right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hate it. God, that's <laughs> that's a rant I'll have next time because I hate the MVP how it's awarded. Westbrook averaging thirty point nine points a game, forty three percent field goal percentage, thirty three percent from three, eighty two percent from the free throw line. Harden, 28.4, 45% from the field, 36% from three, 85% from free throws. Free throw. Yeah. Uh, and he's got 12 assists per game, I believe, with eight and a half rebounds per game, while Westbrook's got uh, close to 11 for each, maybe 10 and a half for he's rebounds. He's got 10 and a half for rebounds. Uh, 10.9. Harden's got 8.2. And then assists. Harden's actually got more assists per game. He's averaging 11.9. <laughs> Dude, that's what I've been saying. Westbrook's that's, what I, that's what I've been saying, man. Yeah, so now that you've got the you stats. You don't have to spend that last minute doing the stats. I got them already. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got them <laughs> loaded up. But yeah, yeah, no. In my defense, I'm not a big NBA And he was the guy. first person ever to have a triple-double with more than 50, 15, and 15. Can I? Ever in history. Can I ask you guys this question about the MVP since... Obviously, yeah, I mean, might as well have your right now, man. There. At least yeah, I might go into the ramp, but what I'm because my thing is right. Is it most valuable player to a team, or is it just most valuable player in the NBA? It's most valuable player in the NBA, hands down. I don't, so, so when, when, but but it's there, such a hard question, right? Because like, am I really going to sit here? Record and say, matters because it means that. See, I don't think it matters as much as it should. Like, I think. Well, if I'm going to put onus on Damian Lillard. For having the record that his team does with yeah. the talent that he has, it's, it's a case by case basis. Like, so when King Felix won the Cy Young, it's because his team wasn't good enough. Uh, you know, he had the numbers, but his team wasn't good enough to help him get the wins. But you know, uh, in some other circumstances, 
So you're, like in the yeah. NBA, you have more control over getting those wins as yeah. an individual, right? right? I yes. get yeah. that's what it comes down to isolation. Yeah, you know, I get five that. Five minutes in, left, it's all isolation. See, in baseball, I'm, I'm way even more hatred towards the MVP. <laughs> oh my god, it's insane. But all those awards are rigged and stupid. Well, no one from Colorado ever win. No one Arenado's numbers are always great, but because he plays in Colorado, he'll never win. Yeah, it's it's an absolute ridiculous stat. I mean, the year. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go real quick in this rant. But the year, this is Cy Young now. Same thing as the MVP. It always happens. Right. Pedro Martinez and Barry Zito. Do you remember that? Those two going at it for Cy Young. Barry Zito takes home the Cy Young over Pedro Martinez because he has more wins than him. Pedro has a lower ERA, more strikeouts, and a lower whip. What? <laughs> Why? Well, Porcello won because of the wins. Y- yeah, and I'm a Red Sox fan. I don't think that should be. You know, I'm not saying wins should factor uh, a little bit. It should be about the ERA. You know, we had you had the whole thing. Into, into the NBA though, I, it does it does go towards. Mm-hmm. They can control winning more often, right? But I also think sometimes it's a little more like it's a little too much. Like, oh well, this guy got him into the playoffs. Oh, this guy's team was better. Is it really mm-hmm. that guy's fault that that team's better? Like, oh, my GM did a great, like a better job. Like, thank you, GM. That's going to cost me an MVP <laughs> now because I have better numbers than this guy. But he right. led his team well, to the Mike playoffs. Mike Trout just won MVP, huh? Mike Trout just won MVP, and he had a terrible team. Yeah, which is about time somebody won the. You know, I, I'm not saying it always I happens, but like. There's a lot of times where those wins and playoff team goes way too much into it. You know, in my opinion. Some of those MVPs that Aaron won, I don't know they were that deserving, to be Next. honest. Yeah. Shoot. Uh, let's shoot. go back. Shoot. What? Are you going to go back to I was going to say, should we segue into Yeah, I was going to go back to the NBA and say. Yeah, let's go back to that. I had a that. point to make about the NBA and the Warriors, Warriors and Cavs. And as someone who listens to talk radio a lot, I do kind of n- – Want other things we talk. We talk about Lord. <laughs> I do want other things we talk about other than the Warriors cast because that's all it's going to be yeah. until till uh, June and when it's all over, and then we'll talk about the draft <gasps> a, little, a little bit. Uh, but, so like on the, on this podcast, we'll talk more about the rest of the league. But oh, I want to touch on something real quick between these two, and I think it's the legacy, obviously, of Durant. Big, big on on this because he's on the Warriors now. But I think Stephen Curry is going to be the guy that has to step up because the matchups between these two teams. How many times does Kyrie Irving outplay Steph Curry? Oh, every single time. I feel like you're you're right. That's a good call because it's Durant and LeBron will go at it. Curry's going to have to be the one that really mm-hmm. steps up. I mean, right. you know, Clay Thompson. If Clay Thompson plays well, that's an advantage they have over the Cavaliers. But Stephen Curry really Clay Thompson needs to. might be a better three point shooter than. Oh, I think like pure. Yeah, yeah, than Steph. And we're talking about legacies in terms of Clay Thompson. It's, you know, if he he needs to be on it, like in order to get hit, like the basically what I'm trying to say is for his legacy to get hit the ceiling of what he might have been able to be, he probably is the one who needs to be on a different team. Like, what if he changed teams with Durant? What would he be doing in Oklahoma City uh, with Westbrook and would his legacy and his uh, stardom go up? Instead of being kind of in a way, especially because 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 of Draymond Green's yeah of uh, bravado and this such confidence that he has and the voice he is almost of the team or he is <laughs> of the team, um, does Clay Thompson get almost get almost forgotten almost like Iguodala's he's def- basically forgotten yeah yeah how good Iguodala's been so for for Clay Thompson I think he's you know besides that sixty point game and that thirty seven point quarter that will you know to be in the record books obviously the thirty seven point quarter. Um, you know, I, I think people are going to, you know, he, he could have been more remembered. And obviously his career's not over yet. But at this juncture, I think if his career keeps going the way it is, he'll be remembered. He not as good get, as he could have been if he had just been the guy on the team. That's where it's, be it's interesting. Would you, would, you, would you rather be a guy who doesn't win championships on another team and get remembered better than a team, the guy who's going to get remembered just because he won championships with Steph Curry and Kevin Durant? Is Clay Thompson going to win a championship without them? I love Clay Thompson. Oh, if Durant couldn't, I think it's I think it's interesting to to think about and to it's talk a, about. It's definitely Clay. a very good topic to think about because I, I'm thinking to myself if Westbrook can't lead defensively, that team, he he can lock down. Oh, he's all I listen. I love I love Clay Thompson. But he, like, right, so yeah, that's, that's a valid point too. But who's to say? Le, do you think LeBron never wins a title if he doesn't team up with Wade and Bosh? Well, yeah, because he won one in Cleveland. Well, but I'm saying, forget that. Let's. Let's well, actually, that. if he didn't go there, you Kyrie Irving wouldn't have got drafted. Yeah, there. there you go. That's my rant. That the, the NBA was rigged, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> rigged, yeah. But, no, think, hey. but think about it. They won the lottery three out of four times. LeBron wasn't there, 
It was all set up for him to come back. I, obviously, I, I think I I they, I, they obviously never Bennett was a huge bust. Obviously, Bennett was a huge bust. They traded Wiggins for Love, but it was all set up for LeBron to I, come back to Cleveland. I, 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 with I think Kyrie secretly, Irving and Kevin Love because of a trade. Yeah, I think secretly it was an inside job by the Cavs. That's why I was talking LeBron. about the rig thing part. Yeah. It was like you know what, LeBron go to Miami. And then we come you back leave, here, and we're, we're going to set this up for a championship run. I mean, down. that's obviously. I don't know if I'm going to call it. I'm right, not going to say but obviously. It was very false, good. But uh, it's false. Very good luck to <laughs> fall into as a Cleveland. Uh, right, it's kind of worked out. Because um, <laughs> how does that work out if LeBron? So does LeBron eventually get someone to come to Cleveland? You know what's crazy? Yeah, I think I think right? someone I think someone would. I think LeBron has that persuasive ability to. Do get you think it kind of goes against him that he couldn't convince Dwayne Wade? Because Dwayne Wade at this point. Let's talk about, Dwayne Wade left. Like Dwayne Wade ended up. It's like, oh no, Dwayne Wade was like, yeah, I'm never gonna leave Miami, man. But you gotta come to me. He, well, Dwayne I, Wade, think, I know Miami has no state tax. Yeah, it's Miami. Like you're talking think, about location. I think Cleveland's Wade Cleveland. wanted to go home. But did it say something? That LeBron couldn't get Bosh and Wade, Bosch and Wade to come to Cleveland. I think he could have got Bosh. He could have probably gotten. Bosch. I think he could have got Bosh. But Wade's a good point. I don't. You know, he couldn't have got. He couldn't have got Wade now. He, think, even though there was a contract, like he right, wouldn't have made right. as much money. But it's very hard. To get like a superstar like Dwayne Wade, who is mm-hmm. a champion, say, "Hey, you know what? Leave Miami." What does Leave it say? About, what does it say about Wade, though? I think I think Wade. What does it say about Wade to have gotten LeBron to come to Miami? Oh, he's he's a I, Wade's a great. He's a captain. Yeah, exactly. You know, he reminds me of a little bit. I, I don't want to get into that, but he's just a great captain and overall leader. Where mm-hmm. he, you know, he had the confidence in that meeting, like when he talked to LeBron, because they're boys. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've done it. Mm-hmm. We've got a great owner, great general manager, dude. Come with me to Miami, mm-hmm. where as a you know, let Cleveland lo- build their loca- assets. Yeah, and then you can go back and be he, hero. You know what that meeting was? You know, what has Cleveland done for you? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you know, remember the year they got a uh, Amari Stoudemire instead of well, I hate- uh, who, Cleveland's made some poor decisions while LeBron's there until this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, they oh my god, I can't think of who they brought in, but it was Amari Stoudemire. They brought in instead of somebody else, a power forward. I, oh. You remember that? I, oh, my God. What was his name? The big Afro guy, right? That you're talking about? No, I mean, talking they about had a chance now. to bring someone in a lot more talented to help LeBron, and instead they brought Amari Stoudemire, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, I had to Cleveland? Go, Amari was never on Cleveland. I can't think of the power forward's name. Because Amari was never on Cleveland. Yeah, he never went to Cleveland. Oh, my gosh. Who was it they brought in? Well, they had Antoine Jameson. That's it. Okay, Antoine. J- it was Antoine Jameson. Who uh, who was it? Oh my God! It was at that point they were going to bring somebody else in. Instead, I don't know. I can't even think of it anymore. It was years ago, but mm-hmm. was it crazy? Was it Amari? Amari? Where they should have been brought in? Amari Maybe it might have been. It might have been. They should have brought Amari, but I don't know why Amari stuck in my head that he played in Cleveland. Maybe it's just those. He years. played in Miami. I don't know. He did. That he did. Yeah. Without LeBron, though. But. Just like Shaq. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Shaq played in both. All right. But yeah, but, I mean, just to go off top. I mean, and then to segue in, I know you had something to say about Bosch, right? Right, Mike? To me, I just. I just don't think Bosch is that good. I mean. He, well, at this point, it's kind of sad to talk about Chris Bosch because of the whole blood clot thing. I, yes, that's true. But I, I am. I just agree with you wholeheartedly. But go ahead. If. Even if Bosch doesn't go to Miami, I still think they win those titles. Truthfully, I just got to swear. Who got, that I really who got the rebound off LeBron's brick and passed it to Ray Allen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who's to say that? I'm sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> I got nothing. He stretched the floor, man. He's a stretch four. He was what? So I mean, I agree with you that. Um. Okay. If you told me that Kevin Love wasn't intricate in beating the Golden State Warriors, I would somewhat agree with you there. But Chris Bosh, and the one they won, he was very important to be a stretch four in a lot of different matchups. Just like Kevin Love is in different matchups as well. Very important to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Stretch four, that's exactly what LeBron but needs. But you can definitely say that Chris Bosh is. Kevin Love almost cost him the title last year at the same time. That's his matchups. That's his matchups. So, that, yeah, that was one he shouldn't have played as much in. Yeah. By matchups. the way. But he was he was intricate part of getting them there. Look what type of season he has during the regular season. By the way, you guys were right. So it was Antoine Jameson, but it was Amari Stoudemire that they were they trying to get. Yes, and that was it. in 2010. That was going to just absolutely crush <laughs> me if I couldn't figure out why Amari Stoudemire was in my head. Yeah, I just remember being Makes like, sense, yeah. why did they make that move? Anyone to the Knicks is then? I, I believe so, yeah. yeah, because it was after Phoenix. So mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, the Knicks it was and, the Knicks, yeah. yeah. Some pretty solid years with the Knicks oh, and yeah. the Yeah, you know, I liked Amari Stoudemire. Uh, but yeah, no, dude. I think Bosch Bosch was a winner in Toronto, man. He won the Atlantic with Toronto. Is Chris Bosch Clay Thompson? 
What we were just talking about? You know what? He probably is. Right? Like, he goes to a team with LeBron and Dwayne Wade, and you kind of like... And again, unfortunately, he won't have it. He won't be on his own again, because well, I don't I'm think he's going to be able that, to play again. No, yeah. Well, you know, I, unfortunately for him. I mean, Bosh isn't terrible, but I just think... He's definitely not terrible. You're right. But I, I think, you know, he when he was in Toronto by himself, he got made to look like he was this great thing. By who? His own play? Yeah. But then, you <laughs> know... Disagree. But then... But, but then he goes... <laughs> He, dis- well, he goes to Miami and he's around those two. And he, his numbers aren't as great. You know what I'm saying? That's Kevin Love right there. Yeah. Well, yeah to, your, to that Kevin point, Love though, was a double double animal in, in Minnesota. And to that point, they, too, LeBron, James, down a LeBron James' numbers, LeBron James numbers went down when he went to Miami. Like even true, the best true. player in the world, not much, not a true, not true. crazy not, amount, not but they go much, down. But, you know, right. when you have more people to share the ball with. I mean, Steph Curry, look at his numbers right now. Yeah. yeah, last I, year he was just absolutely insane. I want to have 23 points, right, points right And now. I don't know off the top of my head, but are Kevin Durant's numbers better than they were last year? They might be. Kevin Durant is yeah, more I know of he's a been on fire lately. Offense, for whatever reason. The Steph but, seems to be. Yeah. I mean, Steph could have, you know. There's always going to be a decline. Make, he's still making threes, but. Yeah, there's always going to be a decline. It's, how how much is he going to shatter a career three-point record? Oh, my god. Yeah, goodness. how many percentage of shots is he taking compared to last year's? Right. Like the big question. All right, so. I get what you mean, though. You, you know, you see Chris Bosh, but I just think he's a good player. I just think he he went to Miami to win championships and play with his friends. Stats obviously took a hit because you're playing with LeBron James and Dwayne <laughs> yeah. Wade. All right, so Durant's averaging twenty five point seven right now. Probably a little worse than he was last year. Probably around twenty eight last year. I think twenty eight point two. Yeah, I mean it's not a lot, so but I'm it's the difference in the team, right? Right. Exactly. Plus, because last year Westbrook lot missed a lot of time too. Draymond Green's numbers in terms of points per game are, are down oh, a lot yeah. too because he doesn't need to score, but he's still he's still getting you know the assists and it yeah. whatnot. All right, you're listening to the Sit and Side Sit and Sports Side <laughs> podcast here at 1045theteam.com. I'm Eric Hammond along with Matt Hogan and Mike James. Last topic of the podcast, guys. We got the college football playoff final. I believe that's what they call it, right? Oh uh, yeah. Yep. And it's all set up and rematch. It's kind of a, you know, we could talk about that as well, as as well as talk about your favorite bowl games. I mean, you had a great game between Penn State and USC in the Rose Bowl. Uh, so if you want to recap the bowl, you, you guys, you, we had to work some of them, so we had forced I mean, yeah. to watch some of them. But uh, Yeah, the Rose Bowl. Oh. I think that um, here's my take it. Here's my two cents about the college football playoff. And this is what, the, you know, uh, you can take it how you want. It's my two cents. Washington game, uh, Washington versus Alabama, not a good game. Clemson versus Ohio State, not a very good game. College football playoff does do you necessarily need to? Does conferences matter? Or should it be? It should just be the best team. Period. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I'm trying to get across. But I, I think it saying. should be the, the best four teams that maybe even the eye test. I know people don't really like the eye test, but why not set up good matchups that you know are going to be good instead of just like, oh, we have to make sure you put this Pac-12 team in there because Washington, yeah, they, they went up seven nothing. Never been there. But they were ne- they were never going to be a threat to Alabama. No. There, there's that. And then, how are you going to make the argument? Penn State should have been there, regardless. I agree. I agree. Penn State played very well. I mean, it, their quarterback just threw a very bad pass. And Ohio State victory, had a but... very good year this year, hands down. Well, USC was the hottest team, right, coming into this? Yeah, but they, they, they got could, no they traction. They lost. That. They, lost. They, they lost. They had too many losses. Times. But how are you going to say that kind of goes to my point, though? Is they were the hottest team, you know? Sure, three losses, especially this year. They're everyone. You're going to say losing. Oklahoma didn't deserve to be there. I know they don't have a Big Twelve championship game anymore, yeah. but the Oklahoma State game was technically the Big Twelve championship. I they mean, won their you, last you said ten Piron games. Was gonna, you know, you want the Jets to take him? He's not even top ten in uh, Mel Kiper's list of running well, backs. Nobody cares what Mel Kiper thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Samaj P. Ryan is going to be okay if he comes oh, out. I'm sure he'll be okay. If he comes out this year or next year, he came out. He's, he already announced. Did, did he make an official? I believe so. All right, just so you know, Baker Mayfield's coming back next year. Yeah. That team's going to be filthy. I'm going to keep it simple with mine with NCAA. You know, the whole college football. Retail? Alabama's going to win it. Yeah, I. Uh, the whole system of how teams are selected is that's so hard. I don't. We know. talked about this last week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we brought it up. We touched it. Touched on it. I don't know how you make it fair. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think there's a way with it. When you have that many schools that are playing at Division One level. Right. I think the only way to make it fair is what we were saying last week in terms of make it more like the FCS. Yeah, you'd have. You know, I mean, that's the only other that's way. 20 teams, I believe, get in or 24. You all would lose the first team out. I know that. Oh, they were 25? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but the, see, like, it's all about. See, college football is all about making money. 
And if you take away some home games, uh, we're not going to make money. So yeah. We got to have, you know, we got to have the 12 games in there. We got to have the conference games in there. So it's either shorten the season and make it more to like a lot of teams get in. Because listen, I know 68 teams get into the NCAA tournament. Obviously, there's so many uh, bids in, in, in basketball, right? I know we do talk about, oh, this team should have gotten in over that team. But when Final Four comes around, are we saying that VCU should have gotten in over uh, St. John's at Final Four? No. Like, oh, if VCU got in, they would have made it to the Final Four. No. Yeah. But guess what we can say? Well, you know what? If Penn State got there, I think they would have beaten Alabama. You St. Know? John's with the upset of the year this year, though, beating Syracuse by 33. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, sure. And everyone's like, oh, there's no sure. Everyone's thing. like, oh, uh. yeah, yeah. I like these voices that are coming out today, Eric. <laughs> by they, the way, they got these very like, distinct voices. Oh, if we expand it to 16, we'll be worrying about 17. Yeah, no, I, I think yeah, we'll be worrying about 17 when that happens. But when, uh, but it's very unlikely we're going to be like, you know what? If that 17th team got in, they yeah. probably would have won. Four's not even. A we playoff. never talk about the 68th, 69th team winning the NCAA tournament. Yeah. I know that's a lot more, but that that story. Drowns out fast. I yeah. think it was do the same in the college football playoff. Personally, I do believe that. Yeah, four is. I just don't even look at it as like a playoff. I just look at it as like mm-hmm. it's it's four teams. It's two games. You once know again, I mean? a team yeah. has one, to win. Once again, we're putting ourselves in a position of something that we were not podcasting about. Yes, two years ago, it's right? True. Well, how I say it wins it all. Yeah, they were the team that got in. TCU was the four, right? Yep. And obviously, I think you had Baylor uh, there as well. But TCU was the four going into the, the weekend, right? And I don't think they had a championship game. I don't believe they did. If they did, they won it. I, can't yeah, I think they were still... They don't. It's a Bay 12. They yeah. don't have a championship game. Okay, so Ohio State goes out, and they cream their opponent. They absolutely win. Uh, like, I think it was like 38 nothing, something like that. Cardale Jones, fantastic job, conference championship game. They jump TCU to get to the four seed. And we know, you know that story's already written. Ezekiel Elliott, Cardale Jones, great job. You beat Alabama, and then you go on to win a championship. But guess what? TCU was in at that four, right? And then their bowl game, I believe, I forgot who they, who they played in their bowl game, but they took care of business in their bowl game. But they, they went out, and they played very well. So who's to say TCU gets in over Ohio State that TCU won't have what Ohio State did? Like The, the committee could be sitting there like, oh, yeah, we made, we made the right decision because Ohio State got in, and they ended up winning. But who's to say that they didn't screw over TCU because TCU would have won it all, right? It's fair. So... But anyway, back to the college football at the final. <laughs> I think Alabama's got it. I think, leads tie, to, I think it leads into a, an interesting conversation that we could either save for later, like after the game's Ooh. over, or, or do it now and talk about Nick Saban and his possible future. I think I think we could save that almost for if he okay. wins it or not. Because if he loses, if, if there's going to be a whole different conversation, true, right? Be. We'll, we'll, we'll have our first ever tease, all right? Oh, I like, I like this. Like Whoa, that. Let's yeah. look into the tease. Oh, my God. I love it. Coming up next week is Nick Saban, the greatest NCAA football coach ever. And will he possibly ever redeem himself in the NFL after a disastrous couple of years with Miami Dolphins? Find out next week on the Sit and Sports Side podcast. Oh, look at that. From Mike James, Matt Hogan, I'm Eric Hammond. Twitter handles too, right? Let's yes, look look at our Twitter handles. handles in. Yes. So for the people that are listening, if you ever want to follow us, we're always tweeting out sports news and our opinions and yes. our arguments against each other. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm at Eric H1045. I'm at Hogan Hoagie. Hogan so Hoagie. yes, so this is actually spelled H O G A N H O G E Y. Coolest Twitter name out there. <laughs> See, I changed mine to be simple. <laughs> I like. I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know how to change my name on there. <laughs> I can teach him. No, yeah, you might have to teach me. Might have to be like Hogan an, Hoagie. Yeah, right. Hogan Hoagie. I'm at announcer MJ44. And you guys can join Tim Kirchin. As his yes. followers. Timmy. Oh, yeah. If you're listening, Timmy, it's for you. Also, make sure to check out the website, 1045theteam.com, where yes. we have yes. blogs in there talking about so uh, sports stories. Yeah. On the YouTube page, obviously. Absolutely. Also, there also are, or on the 1045theteam.com. Or 1055theteam.com. Craig Byron Hunt. No, but. Good stuff. Good and then stuff. we also have our new Twitter page, which we started today, at Sitting Sports Side. Perfect. Oh, on Twitter. Perfect. Follow us there. Love it. And if you guys can leave comments or tweet at us if you want a YouTube video that you can download that's just our intro. Yes. <laughs> People are <laughs> loving that intro. <laughs> our intro is awesome. And if you're nice, we will uh, give you a shout out too. Yeah, if you, if you have any questions, obviously. Yes. You can tweet at, at Sit and Sports Side, at 
Hogan Hoagie. <laughs> at announcer M- That's MJ44. Announcer MJ44 or at Eric H1045. What's easier though? Hogan Hoagie. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty easy. You know what? I'm I'm uh, having hankering for a Hoagie right now. So oh. <laughs> Once again, for Mike James, Matt Hogan, I'm Eric Hammond. Thank you for listening to the Sit and Sports Side podcast right here on 1045theteam.com.